Hello everyone. This is what a fluffy got all his powers at a young age. Please like and subscribe, 8 likes for next part and enjoy. Fluffy jumped down from the ship, ignoring the cries of his Nakama that were telling him that he'll be recognized. There was only one thing going through his head right now. Ace, where are you? Sabo, are you with him? Luffy hoped that Ace took Sabo with him, although he seriously doubted that. From what he'd seen of Ace's ship it was only big enough to carry one man comfortably, if you could call it that, considering that you most likely had to stand the whole journey. Also, from what he understood, Ace ignored the orders of his captain and went ahead to find Blackbeard by himself since he was so hot-headed. Sabo was a different kind of person though, and Luffy doubted Sabo would do the same. Luffy clenched his fist. Even if I have to go to both Impel Down and Marineford again, even if I have to go through hell itself, I'll still prevent your deaths. Luffy thought. Maybe I'll compensate death with Blackbeard and Akainu. His fist turned black. Then he realized what he was doing. Damn. If I unknowingly use this in front of Ace Luffy thought as he relaxed his posture. Well, it'll be a problem. He continued to walk. After a few moments, he finally reached the city. The sign at the entrance read Nanahana. Yep, this is definitely the place where I meet Ace. He thought. He walked through the streets and looked around, observing the different buildings. Altro he wasn't that hungry he still wanted to find the restaurant. Would you like to live for a thousand years sir? A man with a gold painted apple asked him. His eye twitched in irritation. No thanks. He answered. But the man wouldn't drop it. Are you sure, sir? Everyone wants to live long. The man told him. At lost. He shouted and the man fell on his butt, intimidated. Luffy was quite proud of his intimidating aura when he was angry. It prevented annoying people from well annoying him. He walked past the man and ignored the stairs that were following him. At that moment, another annoyance decided to appear. A man with brown hair and beard, dressed in a blue shirt, black pants and a black cloak, approached him directly. Luffy could see him unsheathing the two swords he wore on each side of his belt. The man also had several pistols on his person. So this passes for a bounty hunter these days Luffy thought. And such an uncool outfit. The man ran towards Luffy and Luffy thought for a second there that the man would outright attack him, but he stopped just in front of him with his swords drawn. So you're the new rookie, eh? The man with 70.000.000 berry on his head. Monkey D. Luffy. The man spoke. Luffy stopped walking. I see the government must have made a mistake. There's no way such a tiny guy could have such a high bounty. Luffy's eye again twitched in irritation. This is the grand line. Why do such idiots walk around here? Just by looking at my scar one could see that I'm not just some tiny guy dot. Yes, I'm Luffy. What do you want? He finally answered. He noticed that a few people gathered around. So that really is Mujiwara. A few of them commented. He could hear them whispering among themselves. About him. Is it true he's from East Blue? Record bounty. He heard a few of the men around them cheering on the other guy. Mushy. 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 They yelled. Crush him, mushy. Another said. What do I want? The man repeated. Your head of course. My name is Mushy Karen, and I'm the famous bounty hunter of Arabasta. Luffy sweat dropped. So, his name is Bug Hen's Egg. Never heard of you. Luffy told him and the man deflated somewhat. However your first name fits as weakling such as yourself. And then he walked past him. This of course infuriated the man. Why you little? He yelled and ran after him. He attempted to slash Luffy, but Luffy easily dodged every one of his pathetic attempts as he walked, searching for the restaurant. Bite me, damn it. The man yelled. Luffy stopped in his tracks and turned around. I have no need to fight bugs. He told him. Armament. His right hand turned shiny black. He dodged as the man attempted to stab him with his right sword and cut him with his left, and then he simply slapped the man with a hockey-enhanced palm. The man ended up bloodied in the wall of the nearest building. I slapped them them away. Luffy told the jaw-dropping crowd, turned and walked away. I kin to understand why Mihik was so mean to Zora now. It's just too tempting. Luffy thought and snickered. Then he noticed a nearby sword shop. Hmm, should I? He thought to himself. Then he decided for it and walked inside the shop. There was an old-looking shopkeeper, with a short white beard, but no hair. He was dressed in a simple blue robe, which still showed his rather muscular body. He had plenty of swords for sale, some of which looked to be of rather exquisite design. My name is Yurish. May I help you my lad? He asked. Luffy stepped to the counter and nodded. Yes, old man. Luffy told him and put the his sword on the counter. My friend gave me this sword and I want to know how much it's worth. I'm not looking to sell it, I'm just interested. The man took his sword in his hands and first looked at the design of the hilt and the sheath. Then he unsheathed the sword and looked at the blade. After this he put it back in the sheath. 
This is a sheet of no kanashimi, tomorrow's sorrow, of the skillful grade of named swords or the Mido. Yurish told him. However it's also referred to as the sword of the non-swordsman. Luffy quirked an eyebrow. This is because the one who made this sword was a bit of an odd fellow, you see. Or so they say. The man continued. Some think it's a curse. Why? Luffy asked. What is the problem with it? The man sighed. It's not a sword meant for a swordsman or how should I put it. When a true swordsman wields it, it's said that it will annoy and possibly endanger the wielder. Strikes will miss, the sword will slip when in a deadlock with the opponent and such. The man told him. However, should a non-swordsman, a man of lesser discipline use it, it's said to protect him, and they say that whatever cuts he may inflict on himself while training, will never threaten his life. The man studied him for a while and then gave him his sword back. Did you have any trouble with it? He asked. Luffy shook his head. Then again, I'm not what I'd call a real swordsman. He told the man. He smiled. It's better that way then. This blade would only harm a swordsman. So, how much is it worth? Luffy asked him. The man gained a thoughtful expression. On craftsmanship alone I'd say about 10.000.000 berry. However, no swordsman would pay a single berry for it if they knew about its, shall we say curse. Yurish explained. But in the underground they say that people who are searching for it would be willing to pay much more than it's worth, maybe even four times more. Luffy nodded. Then he reached into his pocket and pulled out a few berry notes and put them on the counter. Lad, I didn't give you anything. You don't have to pay. The man told him, somewhat shocked. Luffy smiled. For your time. Luffy told him and walked out of the shop, leaving a very shocked and grateful shop owner behind. So that's why Shanks gave me the sword. Luffy thought and pushed the sheathed sword back into its place. Then he heard a very familiar voice. Even in this place, your vigilance against pirates is still as high as ever, Smoker-san. A voice told. Gee. Another voice said. These are wannabe pirates, not real ones, to Shiggy. Luffy tried to walk away, but it was too late as the owner of the second voice spotted him. Ujiwara. Smoker shouted. He walked towards Luffy, who stopped in his tracks. Why are you here, Mujiwara? The captain asked him. Luffy sighed. They beat the crap out of Crocodile. Luffy told him. He knew telling Smoker would not ruin anything, as the man would be in his way anyway, but Smoker might also decide to help him in some way, since he was one of the more decent marines Luffy knew. Crocodile? Smoker asked with wide eyes. Luffy sighed and nodded. Why? Crocodile is the reason this war in Arabasta is happening, Smokey. Luffy told him. Now can I go, Smokey? Smoker unsheathed his jut. Didn't think so anyway. Smoker jumped towards him and activated his devil fruit power. Smoke approached Luffy from all directions again. Luffy however noticed that this time, the smoke seemed faster. He jumped up to avoid it, but above him smoke was already forming. Legs formed out of the smoke about him and attempted to kick him, but Luffy blocked the kicks with his arm. Then smoke surrounded him again. Luffy used his Gomu Gomu no Muchi to whip the smoke away. Then a Judd approached from behind. Luffy unsheathed his sword and parried it and then landed on the ground. Smoke was already all around him again, but this time Luffy jumped forward, using his hockey to punch the smoke away in front of him. However, smoke followed him again and surrounded him. Luffy tried to find where Smoker's actual body was, but it was hard until he made an actual move. Smoker then tried to attack with his jut from behind, while at the same time forming legs in the front to kick him. Luffy activated his armament and resisted the kick while blocking the jut with his sword. You've improved, Smokey. But it's still not enough. Luffy told Smoker and punched the smoke underneath the jut, sending the man flying into a building, unconscious. Then Toshigi yelled and tried to attack him. He sidestepped the swing and punched the hilt of her sword, sending it from her hands. Your captain will be fine. I don't kill good men. He told her and walked away, and then she ran to her commander. Luffy then used Soru to get away from the scene fast. When he stopped, it was right in front of the restaurant. But luck. Luffy thought. But then he was confused, as there were a lot of people in front of it, many more than usual. What's going on? He walked to the crowd and asked a nearby man. Well, a man seems to have died while eating. The man answered. He probably ate a desert berry. Luffy thanked the man and pushed himself past the crowd. Finally he arrived in the front. He smiled. On the chair in front of him with his back turned sat none other than Porkas Ace, with his white beard pirate's tattoo and his face in his food. He walked up to the man, ignoring the irritating protests of the onlookers, they said that approaching a man who died because of a desert berry was dangerous, and to the shock of everyone punched him on the head. Why are you punching a dead guy? Someone yelled in outrage. Luffy gained a twitch above his eyebrow. Then to everyone's horror the dead guy lifted his head and turned around. He woke up. Everyone yelled at once. Luffy gained another twitch. 
Ace glared at him for a moment, but then his expression eased somewhat as he realized who he was. Lou? Ace asked. Ace, stop falling asleep in your food. Luffy told him in an irritated voice. He fell asleep. Everyone yelled again. That was the last straw. That lost annoying jerks. Luffy yelled. They fell on their butts and scrambled out of the restaurant. Ace blinked a few times. Is that really Luffy? He asked himself. Then said man walked up to the counter and sat down. He poked the man in charge a few times. Dude. Give me food now. Do your job. He yelled at him. The man bowed and complied. Ace sweat dropped. Lou, is that really you? Ace asked. Luffy's eye twitched. Of course I am. Who do I look like? He asked him. Luffy's evil twin. Ace said in a deadpan expression. Luffy sighed. Well that happens when I don't get any sleep. He told Ace. Then they ate. Afterwards, they headed to the ship but were stopped by Baroque Works agents in an alley. Well, aren't we lucky? An agent commented. We get both Fire Fist Ace and Straw Hat Luffy in the same day. Would you just get lost stupid weaklings? Luffy shouted at them. This of course angered them and they attacked them furiously. Luffy, you really need to work on anger management. Ace told him as he avoided a slash. Luffy wasn't in the mood to screw around however. Luffy unsheathed his sword. Inkei no Akinami, circular red wave. Luffy yelled and slashed around himself, completing a circle. I'm not sure how well I explained this. He used no hockey, so the attack passed through Ace's loja body, but it cut up everyone else, as well as cutting most of the closest buildings. Ace's jaw was on the ground while buildings fell apart around them. Luffy just nonchalantly sheathed his sword and continued walking. You cut me too. Ace yelled angrily. Luffy looked at him oddly. You're a loja. Why do you care? He asked him. Ace sighed. Anyway. Since when can you use a sword? Ace asked him. Luffy shrugged. Shanks told me about flying blade attacks and then I trained myself to be able to do them. Luffy told him. He also gave me this Mido. Luffy lifted his sheathed sword. Luffy, Ace began. Shanks was in the new world the whole time. He couldn't have given it to you. Also, flying blade attacks are very high level techniques. How did you manage to learn them in East Blue of all places? Ace, Shanks gave me the sword when I was 5 but told Makino to guard it until I was at least 14. Luffy said. It was half a lie of course. Luffy gave the katana to her voluntarily and Shanks never said anything like that but the rest was true. Also, I'm not an idiot. When Shanks told me how to do it, I knew how and in 3 years I mastered it. Luffy continued. Again a lie. Luffy trained under Shanks for a month which while it didn't make him master the technique, it at least gave him an idea on how to master it. Ace nodded. Listen Luffy, would you join the Whitebeard Pirates? You're Nakama too, of course. Ace then asked. Whitebeard is the greatest pirate I know. I want to make him the Pirate King. Luffy looked at him. No. That's unless he puts me in charge. Luffy replied. Ace laughed. Come on, Luffy, at least think about it. He asked again. No Ace. Luffy answered with a tone of finality. My dream is what I am, and my dream is to be the Pirate King. Always has been. Since I was seven. A sighed. But I would like to talk to him. To thank him for taking you in. Luffy continued. Ace looked at him oddly. You found your place, Ace. I need to thank him for that. Luffy told him. If you promise you won't be a jerk, I'll give you the Den Den Mushy number. Ace said after a moment of silence. So, basically, you don't want me to call him today. Luffy asked. Exactly. Ace answered. By the way, where's Sabo? Luffy asked. Ace looked at him. I'm alone. He answered. Damn. So why didn't you get any sleep, Luffy? Ace asked as they searched for the going merry. Don't tell me you're having nightmares again. Luffy nodded. It got better when I was with you for a while. I got them less and less often. But after you left, they started again. He told him. Ace sighed. It's weird to see you all pissed off at everything again. Ace said. You're so different when you can't sleep because of them. You're really like an evil twin of Luffy. Well, I met a lot of annoying people today too. Luffy replied with a shrug. I can't exactly stay calm while both feeling like crap and having to listen to stupid crap all day. I guess you're right. His brother replied. But still, I haven't heard you yell at someone like that in like forever. It's been very long. Flashback. Luffy, Ace and Sabo walked around the Grey Terminal, trying to find something fun to do, when a few thugs surrounded them. Haha, <laughs> you're those troublemakers, aren't you? One of them said. Blue Jam told me to take care of you. Ace and Sabo prepared to fight, but Luffy just stood there. His eyes darkened. Would you get lost stupid jerks? He suddenly exploded and attacked them. Surprisingly, his powers worked perfectly that day and he beat them all up. Ace sighed. 
Honestly, when are you going to tell me what happened to you? It's not normal for a man to have nightmares about his friends dying all the time. Ace started. Luffy shook his head. I can't tell you, Ace. Ace sighed and nodded in defeat, but then his eyes darkened. Did Gramps do something to you? Ace almost yelled, but Luffy quickly shook his head. Grandpa has nothing to do with it. He answered. Your dad? Ace asked again. Same response. I've only met my dad for the first time after I set sail, Ace. Luffy answered. Ace nodded, but then his eyes widened in surprise. Wait, you know who your dad is now? He asked Luffy. He nodded. So how was the meeting? Luffy sighed. I called him Mr. Sperm Donor. He answered after a moment of silence. Ace blinked a few times. Then he started laughing. I'm sorry. Ace said as he laughed. It's just too priceless ha 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 ha. You calling the revolutionary dragon ha 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 Mr. Sperm Donor? I guess it is. Shishishi. Luffy agreed. Then he noticed Ace's tattoo on his arm. He pointed at it. I see you really like your name, big brother. Luffy commented. Ace shrugged. Oh, I also got a tattoo. Luffy announced and pulled up his sleeve on his right hand and showed the tattoo on his shoulder. ASL. Ace asked as he saw the tattoo. Ace, Sabo and Luffy. Luffy nodded. That's really cool. Why didn't I think of that? Ace asked. Luffy shrugged. Probably because you're egoistical and only think about yourself. Luffy told him. It's egoistical Luffy. Hey, I'm not egoistical. Ace shouted. Yes, you are. Luffy told him. Ace pouted. I, the way, how do you like my devil fruit? The Maramaranomi? Ace asked after a moment of silence. It's cool. Not as cool as mine, but it's nice. Luffy answered. Ace laughed. I think I detect jealousy. Ace chirped out. Luffy shook his hand. I wouldn't trade my Gomu Gomu no me for anything, Ace. Luffy told him. And he meant it. Normal blunt blows to his body didn't hurt at all, unless they were very powerful. He could slingshot himself long distances if he wanted, he had the two gears as well as powerful hockey-enhanced techniques combined with the gears, such as Red Hawk or Elephanto Gun. The Devil Fruit also allowed him to heal really fast. Also, he's used it for practically two lifetimes already, so he was really used to the Devil Fruit and its unique stretching fighting style. And why is that, Luffy? Ace asked. From what I've seen of your Devil Fruit it isn't that great. Luffy had to stop himself from laughing. Typical Ace always talking bad about my devil fruit. Well, Ace, I can enlarge my Luffy started. Blue. Ace interrupted with a red face. Stop saying stuff like that. I was going to say fists, Ace. Luffy replied in a deadpan expression. Ace sighed. But then Luffy snickered. Of course, I can also enlarge my Luffy tried to say. Damn it, Luffy. Ace interrupted again. Feet, Ace, feet. Luffy finished while nearly laughing. Ace sighed in relief. But that too, if you must know. Luffy quickly added and watched Ace's face redden a bit more, but to his, Ace's, relief, they reached the ship. As they did, they saw Karu speeding past them into the desert. Luffy didn't remember why Karu did that, but he assumed it was fine. Oh I, guys. Luffy yelled and waved. They boarded the ship and when they did that, they set sail. Luffy immediately noticed everyone was dressed differently. So, who is this, Luffy-san? Vivi asked. Luffy looked at her outfit with a quirked eyebrow. When did we hire erotic dancers? He asked himself. Vivi wore a dancer girl outfit. Why are you wearing that, Vivi? Luffy asked earnestly. He did not remember from the first time. Sanji Kun got us this. Nami told him with a twitch above her eye, who was also wearing similar clothes. Even though we specifically told him to get us citizens outfits. But, Nami Swan. Dancers are citizens too. Sanji pleaded. Whatever. Nami huffed. Anyway, who's this? That's my older brother, Ace. Luffy told them and pointed at him. Luffy, it's rude to point. Ace told him. Whatever. DP port is the Ace Usopp stuttered. Ace nodded. Why you have a bounty of 550.000.000 berry? Nami asked. Ace nodded again. Don't get any ideas, Nami. Luffy told her. She looked at him oddly. Anyway, Ace is really strong. Like I said, he's the second division commander of the Whitebeard Pirates. Luffy told them again. Luffy, would you ace began. No ace. Luffy interrupted. I won't join you. Ace sighed. Hey, guys. I'd like to thank you for taking care of my brother. I know he can be a handful sometimes. He told the crew. They bowed their heads. Yes, he has. They told him in unison, except Vivi. That's rude, jerks. Luffy yelled and they cringed and moved away from him a bit. Ace chuckled. Anyway, I'm on the hunt for a man named Blackbeard. He's done what no crew member should and killed one of our Nakama, so I'm going to finish him off. 
Ace told them. So what are you here for? Luffy raised his hand in the air. I'm going to beat the crap out of Crocodile. He announced. Ace had wide eyes. You do know Crocodile is a loja? He asked him. And he's a Shichibukai. Don't care. I'll use water. Luffy announced. A sweat dropped. What the hell? What help will that be? He asked him. Luffy looked at him oddly. Well, Crocodile has a sand loja, so he won't be able to fight if I make him wet, right? He told Ace. He gained a thoughtful expression. Well, that might actually work. Ace replied. Anyway, got to go. And I'll take care of those guys for you. Ace pointed at ships with the Baroque work symbol that were approaching them. Then Ace put his hand into his pocket and pulled out a single blank piece of paper. He threw it at Luffy, who caught it. Save this piece of paper, Luffy. It'll allow us to meet again someday. He told him. Luffy looked at the piece of paper. Ace's beaver card. Then the big brother jumped down into his little tiny boat thing. He activated his devil fruit and sailed straight towards the approaching three ships. As he approached, they fired at him, missing completely with cannons, but hitting a few times with guns, which of course did nothing. Then, as he was nearly at the ship, Ace pushed the little boat into the sea and used his great strength to jump across the ship. He landed back on the little boat and activated his devil fruit powers. I can, fire fist. Ace shouted and punched through the enemy ship with his well, fire fist. He crushed the ships as if they were made of paper. Show off. Luffy thought and smiled. Luffy clapped and then waved Ace goodbye as he disappeared, waving as well. Luffy's crew members were gaping at the display of raw power that Ace had just done. Well Luffy, are you sure you're stronger than your brother Yusup stuttered. Luffy smiled. I can do that too, Yusup. Except without the special effects. Ahahaha. <laughs> you're all going to be dying together. How sweet. Crocodile announced, looking at his accomplishment proudly. After crossing both the dried out Aramalu, the once green city as well as Yuba, which was ravaged by sandstorm, the crew came to Rain Base, where Crocodile owned a casino. And now, there they were, trapped in a nice sea stone cage. Smokey, this is all your fault. Luffy yelled angrily and proceeded to punch Captain Smoker into the iron wall of their little cage. Said Marine then picked himself up. How's it my fault, Mujiwara? Nobody told you to run from me. Smoker replied in an irritated voice. Luffy sighed. You're annoying. You keep chasing me, even though I didn't do anything to you. Luffy told him. I didn't want to fight you again. Didn't feel like it. Crocodile continued laughing. Smoker simply sat up on the little bench in the cell. Luffy joined him. Hey, Crocodile, when you stop laughing, could you give me some of that food there? He asked him. Nami's eyes twitched. I'm kind of hungry. It's not like he'd give it to you, Luffy. Yusuf told him. He's right. Crocodile announced. This food is for the quest of honor. And who would that be? Nami asked. Nefertari Vivi, Princess of Arabasta. I've sent my partner to fetch her already. Crocodile told her. The crew's eyes widened upon hearing this. Luffy's lip twitched. But Vivi won't eat. You're pretty dumb, Crocodile. He told him. Crocodile's eyes twitched in annoyance. A few of the straw hats snickered. I don't want to hear that from you, Mujiwara. He answered in an irritated voice. I'm not the one who got caught. Also, I hear you got your butt kicked by old man Whitebeard once. Luffy told him in a childish tone. Crocodile's eyes darkened. Do you want me to kill you right now, Mujiwara Crocodile nearly yelled, and a few of Luffy's jail members cringed. Luffy snickered. So it's true then, Croce. Luffy asked him. Crocodile gritted his teeth. But there's no need to be so angry. Giant Asin is pretty tough. Giant Asin. Everyone, including Crocodile thought. He stared angrily at the cage. Ah, that reminds me. Ace gave me Whitebeard's number. I'm going to say hi to him once we're done here. Luffy told everyone. What? Would you like me to say hi to Shirohij Asin in your name, Crocodile? Luffy asked. Crocodile completely lost his composure and stared dumbly at Luffy. How could a pest like you possibly have Whitebeard's number? He asked him. Luffy gained a thoughtful expression. Well, Luffy began with furrowed brows. Giant Asin calls his crew his sons, right? So that makes my brother his son and I guess that makes me his son too, right? Makes sense, I guess. Yusup replied. Why are you even Nami began in an irritated tone. Oh my god. Luffy interrupted with his sudden realization. I have like 2000 brothers. Crocodile sighed and turned away in irritation. He's going to be dead soon anyway. Mujiwara. Smoker called. Luffy turned to him. You have the Den Den Mushy number of Edward Newgate. We're supposed to believe that. He asked. Luffy shrugged. Don't care what you believe, Smokey. He told him and Smoker gritted his teeth in annoyance. Call me Smoker. He yelled at him. No. Never. I'd rather die. 
Luffy yelled back. Everyone just stared at him dumbly. Gee. Whatever. Smoker sighed and leaned back. And now I'm bored. Luffy announced. Crocodile sighed too. Does he have like a degree in annoying people? He thought. I know. Luffy announced. I'll do impressions. Everyone groaned in annoyance, except Yusuf, who was kinda excited and Zoro, who was sleeping, somehow. First, I'll do a white beard impression. Luffy announced. Yusuf's eyes lit up in awe, and the rest actually looked at him, somewhat surprised. Luffy stood up now and took his sword out and lifted it high in the air with one hand. With his other hand he put one finger above his mouth, representing Whitebeard's mustache. Burrara. You think a little brat like you could beat me, a eh, crocodile man? Luffy impersonated. Smoker's eyes widened. That was actually spot on. He thought. Everyone in the Marines who ever fought against Whitebeard's crew knew how Whitebeard laughed and more importantly, how he addressed almost everyone younger than him as a brat. Cut that out. Crocodile yelled, startling everyone. Now. Luffy yelled, completely ignoring a fuming crocodile. Red-haired Shanks impression. Red-haired Shanks. Everyone thought. Luffy pretended to fall on the ground. Oh, man, I have such a hangover. Ouch. Ben, give me something for the hangover. He said in a pretend pain voice and he massaged his temple. A few of them actually snickered. Crocodile nearly bit his cigarette in half in irritation at his antics. Next. Big Luffy tried to say. Arara, I see you're having fun, boss. A flowery voice interrupted. Nyko Robin stepped into the room and giggled silently to herself. Crocodile glared at her. Damn woman. Crocodile. A familiar voice yelled. Vivi ran into the room and tried to attack him with her weapons, but it was completely useless. Crocodile didn't even bother to dodge as his loja defense allowed him to completely disregard the attack. It's time for the party, eh Miss Alcinde? He asked. Eh? Robin replied. Operation Utopia is starting. Operation Utopia? Nami asked. Crocodile turned his back to them and laughed. Hey, stop that. Luffy yelled. Crocodile continued laughing. Stop, or I'll do another impression. Luffy yelled. Crocodile's eyes widened and he quickly quieted down. Vivi stared in disbelief at how easily Luffy got Crocodile to stop. Robin giggled, but then looked at Luffy. He felt her eyes studying him. He doesn't seem concerned. He behaves like he's the one in control. She thought. What exactly is going on here? What are you planning to do here in Arabasta? Vivi asked in outrage. Crocodile grinned. Shall I tell you what type of person I despise the most? Crocodile asked. It's those that place the happiness of their people above their own lives. Hypocrites. You plan to kill my father? You'll never accomplish something like that. Vivi yelled. Of course he could. Luffy thought. She's still way too naive. Even after. Flashback. I quit. Luffy declared and sat down in the sand. All you want to do is to make sure nobody gets hurt. Aren't you just fooling yourself? What's wrong with that? What's wrong with not wanting for anyone to die? Nothing at all. It's just that people die. Luffy learned that fact the hard way. Many times. Crocodile the proceeded to them their whole plan, laughing while doing it. So, you see the love for this country will destroy his country. He concluded and laughed some more. Vivi and the rest were horrified. Miss Alcindae glanced at Luffy's face again. His expression hasn't changed. She thought. What is this? And do you know why I want this kingdom so badly? Crocodile asked her. How could I understand what goes on in your rotten head? She asked bitterly. She threw herself on the floor along with the chair she was bound on and struggled to drag herself on the floor. It was painful to watch. It's like Kizaru once said. Luffy thought as looked at her sadly. If you're not powerful enough or have help, you can't save anything. Not with determination alone. If she hadn't met us she'd have no hope at all. Thankfully, we're not defeated here. Smoker looked at his thoughtful expression with confusion. He should be screaming, yet he looks almost like he's expecting something to happen. Crocodile turned to leave, and Vivi dragged herself behind him. Oh. Crocodile said as he turned around. You want to tag along, Miss Wednesday? She looked at him. We're on our way to Alubarna as well. He told her. Now, will you save a million people or will you save them? He pulled out a key, but then dropped it intentionally into the hole in the floor, underneath which the Bananawi swam. One of them swallowed the key. Most of the straw hats panicked, even Zoro who had by now woken up. Yet, when Robin's eyes wandered to Luffy, they widened in considerably. His expression still hasn't changed. She thought. He should be panicking, he should be screaming. Why is he looking like this as a part of some sort of plan? She glanced at Crocodile. He was still gloating at a desperate and enraged Vivi. He hasn't noticed. She was always better at reading people than anyone, given her hard past, but Crocodile should have noticed too. And yet, he laughed away. 
Then he told them how he was responsible for the condition of the oasis of Yuba. She looked at Luffy again. He had his fist clenched and looked angry, but otherwise nothing had changed. Then they turned to leave. Crocodile, your plan will fail. Luffy told them simply in a matter-of-fact voice. You won't get this country and you won't get the stupid weapon. They turned around. They both stared at him with wide eyes. How does he know about the ancient weapon? As for you, he spoke and looked straight at Robin, who flinched slightly at his gaze. Don't be a bad girl. What is this? She thought as she regained her composure. How can he be so confident? He speaks like we are the ones in the cage. Then the den den mushy rang. This helped her avoid any questions Crocodile may have had about his statement. Who is this? She asked. Is this getting through? A voice asked. Yes, we can hear you. She told him. Just spit it out. Crocodile yelled impatiently. Oh, now. I know I've heard this voice before. The voice said. Ahem. Welcome to the shitty restaurant. Crocodile's eyes darkened. Shitty restaurant, you say? He asked. Eh, hey, it sounds like you remembered. The voice replied. I'm quite frankly, flattered. Crocodile seemed to remember something as he was quiet for a few seconds. Bastard, who are you? He finally asked. Me? I'm Mr. Prince. The voice announced. I see, Mr. Prince. Where are you? He asked it. Now I can't tell you that. If I did, you'd come to kill me. But it remains to be seen if you can kill me. I'm not foolish enough to slip information out so carelessly as you, Mr. Zero. Crocodile was almost shaking in quiet rage. Then a gunshot and a scream were heard. A man told them that he had caught Mr. Prince. Crocodile asked where he was and after getting the information, they turned to leave, believing everything was well. After Luffy was sure that they were far enough away, he turned towards Vivi. Go get Sanji, Vivi. He told her simply. Water started leaking in at that point, but Luffy just stood there. Don't bother with the stupid bananas. It's Bananawi, Luffy. Yusup interjected. Whatever. Luffy told them. Just go and find Sanji, and when we're free we're going to stop a rebellion. But Luffy-san, it sounded like Vivi started. Have more faith in your Nakama, Vivi. Luffy interrupted her. She nodded and smiled for the first time in a long while. Now go. He said. When Crocodile and Robin returned to the room a few minutes later, they couldn't believe their eyes. In the middle of the room was a floating Mr. Three with two messages pasted to his back. See you later. Shitty Croc. Mr. Prince. And. You suck at this. Monkey D. Luffy. Future Pirate King. Crocodile fumed in rage as he dropped the real key to the cage. Robin was in shock. I was right. Outside. Why did you save me? Rorano's Oro. Smoker asked. Because my captain told me to. Zoro answered. Like I said to your swordsman, Smokey, Luffy said from behind him. I don't kill good men. Smoker turned around. That's nice coming from a pirate. Smoker said. Luffy shrugged. Whatever. He answered, but then handed Smoker a piece of paper. What's this? Smoker asked. We have a common enemy here, Smokey. If you're a man of justice, like you say you are, you'll do as it says. Luffy told him. He turned around and they left, leaving a very confused marine behind. He looked at the message. Smokey. There is a bomb in the capital city of Alubarna. It's in the clockwork tower. There will be two Baroque works agents in there. The bomb is supposed to be shot out of a cannon, but has a timer as well. If it explodes, the city will be gone along with a million people. You work on that. We are going to stop the war and beat up Crocodile. I know you're a marine, but we have a common goal here. As a favor for saving you, please don't attack me and my crew while in Arabasta. We're only here for Vivi. Luffy. P.S. We'll meet again. Smoker gritted his teeth in frustration. What kind of a pirate is this? Now I almost feel bad for chasing him. Damn you, Mujiwara. The group ran away on a sideways moving giant desert crab. They headed towards Alubarna, however, Crocodile followed them and used his sand loja powers to try and grab Vivi, however Luffy grabbed her and threw her back on the crab, and so Crocodile grabbed him instead. He landed awkwardly in a position where his head was almost where his crotch was. Heh, it seems as if the princess ran away from us. Robin commented. Meh, whatever. The agents in Alubarna should be done with their work anyway. Contact them at once. Crocodile told her. I think your games have gone on for long enough, Straw Hat Luffy. Luffy picked himself up and stood up. Oh, no crocodile. Luffy replied with a smile. My games have only just began. You shouldn't have made me angry, Straw Hat. Crocodile told him. Luffy laughed. Angry? I made you angry, Croce. Trust me, I am way past angry. After all you've done to Vivi's country. Luffy replied in the same deceptively cheerful expression. And she, as naive as she is, wants to save every single life. 
And that's why she is always in pain. She thinks she can stop this rebellion without anyone dying. Without anyone dying. There are many stupid mushy pacifists like that. Those who don't know the truth of battle. Do you agree with me? Crocodile asked. Yes. Luffy replied simply. Then Crocodile laughed. But fools like you are also beyond help. You shall be the perfect example. Those who become intimate with others will die because of it. I've left hundreds like that behind me. Then, I guess that makes you pretty stupid. Luffy replied. Crocodile finally snapped and bit his cigar in half. Robin giggled. Maybe I should kill you too Nico Robin. Crocodile told her. She giggled again. If that's how you feel, then do it. She suggested without fear, since she knew he couldn't afford to do that. She started walking away. And whatever happened to your promise to not call me by that name? It's a nice name. Luffy interjected. Even if it does carry a bounty. She turned around. Why thank you. She told him. Then she turned to Crocodile. I'll be heading to Alubarna. Insufferable woman. Crocodile muttered. She glanced back at Luffy. He's facing Sir Crocodile of the Shichibikai, and he doesn't seem afraid. He seems confident even. She thought. Is he just an overconfident fool? Then again, his bounty is 70.000.000 berry regardless, I'll be observing from the distance. She left them alone and Crocodile and Luffy prepared to face each other. You know, now that we're alone, you can watch a few of my other impressions. Luffy told him. Crocodile's eye twitched, but he refused to lose his composure. He pulled something out of his coat and threw it in front of Luffy. It was an Herglis. I'll give you three minutes. Then I have things to do. Crocodile told him in his usual cold tone. Luffy smirked. You're being awfully confident, Croce. He replied. Luffy then hid most of his left hand in his desert outfit, showing only his index finger in such a way that it represented Crocodile's hook. Ahahaha. <laughs> he imitated as Crocodile's eyes darkened in rage. Worthless trash. Worthless tra. Desert spada desert sword. Crocodile yelled, interrupting Luffy. A wave of sand approached Luffy, creating a giant line in the desert. Luffy sidestepped the incoming attack and whistled. But I. If you hadn't dodged that, you'd be saying more than just ow. Crocodile commented. Luffy laughed. Yes, I'd be saying ow 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 it hurts. He replied. Crocodile's eyes darkened again. He tried to slash Luffy with his hook, but Luffy dodged it by pulling his body a little back. Then Luffy tried to punch Crocodile, but he turned into sand and pulled that part of his body away. Crocodile reformed behind Luffy. No one can fight me here in the desert, Straw Hat. You'd better give up on your life. He told him. He tried to slash Luffy with his hook, but when he dodged, he grabbed his neck with his right hand. Armament. Luffy murmured and delivered a strong punch in Crocodile's gut, preventing him from drying him up. It sent his foe flying a short distance away. Crocodile stopped. He looked at Luffy with wide eyes. A hockey user in paradise. He thought. I'd better not take this easy anymore. He formed his hand into some sort of blade. Desert girasol, desert sunflower. He announced and punched into the ground. Now try to get away from that. The ground beneath Luffy collapsed and he dropped into the hole. The ground beneath him then turned into quicksand. He quickly started running up to avoid getting buried alive. Then he sensed Crocodile approaching down, coming at him with his hook on his left hand and what seemed like some sort of blade made of sand. So, he's no longer underestimating me. Luffy thought. He dodged the hook. That's good. The ARCHAN Desert Crescent Blade. His foe announced. Should I try to block it? Luffy thought. Flashback. Impel down jailers tried to shoot Crocodile. All their bullets passed through him. Idiots. Use prison bullets. Someone yelled. Crocodile used this as his cue. He lunged forward, extending his right arm. Archon. He announced his attack. His arm turned into sand, and he literally cut through three jailers with that sand. Swords or guns they tried to protect themselves with did not work. The jailers dried up almost completely and immediately. Crap. Luffy thought and dodged the incoming trail of sand by barely a millimeter. Nice dodge. Crocodile complimented. It seems there is much more to you than I first thought, Straw Hat. But then Crocodile used his both legs to kick Luffy straight down into the center of the quicksand while he used his devil fruit power to stay in the air. Immediately upon hitting the center with one of his legs, Luffy pushed himself into the air and used his sword to try and quickly get out of the hole, but Crocodile formed out of nearby sand in front of him just as he was about to leave the hole. Damn it. He's good. Luffy thought. Better than I remember from Arabasta. Luffy avoided the incoming kick and dodged his right hand, with which his foe was attempting to grab him with, no doubt too to try and dry him. But then, his hook approached. Luffy knew that if he dodged the slash, Crocodile would probably get enough time to kick him back in. Armament. 
He murmured and reinforced his chest area with shiny black hockey armor. The hook hit him, but it was unable to damage him trough his armor. Crocodile looked in surprise, but he didn't have too much time for that, as he saw his opponent pulling both of his fists back into the center of the hole. He's a devil fruit user. He thought, alarmed. His opponent did seem to be incredibly flexible, even for a boy, but he did not think that was actually because of a devil fruit. Gomu Gomu no Luffy announced. Crocodile's eyes widened. Azuka. Luffy finished and hit Crocodile straight into his chest. Said Shichibikai jumped slightly back to try and avoid the hit, but he was still sent flying into the desert. Luffy was finally free and jumped out of the hole with a quicksand. He landed in front of his foe. Crocodile coughed up a bit of blood and looked angrily at his young enemy. He's much more powerful than I thought. Well, it seems I shouldn't have underestimated you, Straw Hat Luffy. Crocodile announced. Luffy smirked. You're right. He told him. But it seems I made the same mistake, Royal Shichibikai, Sir Crocodile. And he meant it. Even using Soru, Crocodile was capable of keeping up with him. He may not have had the raw strength that Luffy had, but he definitely possessed a very powerful Loja Devil Fruit and has mastered it very well. His foe's eyes traveled to the Herglis on the ground. The three minutes have long passed already. He scowled in both anger and irritation. Well, shall we finish this? He asked after a few seconds of silence. He put his right hand on his hook and pulled down the golden part, revealing the poisonous hook underneath. In fights between pirates, anything goes. Nothing is too dirty or unfair. The battle between two pirates is to the death. Crocodile continued. And as you could see, I'm not one of those fools who'd be content to simply possess a devil fruit. I've trained it and turned it into a weapon. His right hand formed a blade. Luffy nodded. So have I. He replied. Crocodile's eyes widened slightly. Luffy took the thumb of his right hand and bit into it. Your third. He announced and blew air into his thumb. Crocodile looked in shock as Luffy's right fist expanded in size. His opponent pulled his hand behind him and formed a fighting stance. This hand, Luffy announced. It's the hand of a giant. Crocodile looked at the hand in skepticism. That hand might be just for show. He thought. But I can't take the risk and get hit by it. Gomu Gomu no Giganto pistol. Luffy announced and threw his hand on his foe. The hand approached fast, so Crocodile wasted no time, turned into sand and flew away with his powers, which increased his speed. Luffy pulled back his fist and turned it normal. The ARCHAN Desert Crescent Blade. Crocodile shouted and Luffy jumped into the air, avoiding the malicious lash. Crocodile smirked and reformed above Luffy and tried to impale him with his hook. Luffy dodged the hook, but then Crocodile grabbed his hand and used his powers to dry it out. Luffy screamed and quickly punched his foe away with a hockey-infused punch. He activated his Soru and lunged at the water that he had long since accidentally dropped on the ground. He quickly drank a bit and his arm returned to normal, but Crocodile wouldn't let him rest for long. He reformed behind him and tried to impale him, but he dodged it. However, the poisonous hook still gave Luffy a flesh wound. Ahahaha. <laughs> this battle is over now. The poison will start to spread all over your body now. Crocodile told him. True to his word, Luffy started feeling pain, but to his relief, it wasn't as bad as he thought it'd be. So, some of my poison resistance is still there. Luffy thought and grinned. It's not as good as it was after Magellan, but it seems it'll still manage to protect me a bit. Why are you smiling, Mujiwara? You're going to die now. Crocodile told him. Luffy laughed. It's not over until I drop dead, Croce. He told him. His foe's eyes darkened. Stop calling me that. He yelled at Luffy. He simply laughed. Make me Croce. Luffy told him, smirking smugly upon saying the last word. Crocodile opened the palm of his hand. A very small sandstorm formed in it. S-A-B-L-E-S -E sandstorm. He announced and threw the tiny sandstorm at Luffy. The sandstorm grew larger and larger, pulling sand from the surrounding desert. As the sandstorm pulled him, Luffy immediately jumped high in the sky and allowed the storm to carry him up until he emerged at the top, high above Crocodile. He extended his arms and grabbed a rock in the desert and pulled himself to it. Immediately upon landing, Crocodile appeared behind him, slicing through his cardigan and again slashing him. By moving his body a bit forward, Luffy avoided any major damage from the slash, but more poison spread through his body. Armament. He announced, pulled his right hand back, twisting it around as he did and turned towards Crocodile, who was behind him, by twisting his body in such a way that would be unnatural to anyone without a rubber fruit. Gomu Gomu no rifle. The attack hit Crocodile straight in the gut and sent him back, flying. He stopped himself after a few meters and put his hand in front of his mouth. He coughed up lots of blood. He looked at Luffy. Damn, this is bad. He thought. If this goes on like this, I won't be able to hold on long enough for him to collapse because of the poison. Why are you even fighting? He asked aloud. 
It's for someone else, isn't it, why are you fighting for someone else? Why wouldn't I? Luffy asked with a smile. I don't know what happened to you to make you think caring about others is worthless, but my Nakama mean everything to me. My dream has no meaning without them. Crocodile laughed then. Then you're about to lose your meaning, Mujiwara. They are probably already dead or will be soon. He told him. Luffy laughed. My Nakama are strong enough to defeat your agents, Crocodile. He answered. His foe smirked. Ahahaha. Even if they do, even if the war somehow stops, even if both me and my partner are defeated, everyone else will still die. Crocodile announced. Ahahaha. And do you know why, Mujiwara? It's because the... If you're going to tell me about the bomb, don't waste your time. Luffy interrupted and grinned. Crocodile's eyes widened in horror and his mouth parted. What? He asked quietly. He looked as if his mind had just collapsed. I know about the bomb, Croce. And I've already told Smoker and my crew about it. Luffy started. Crocodile stared at him in disbelief. Flashback. Luffy turned to Vivi, well they on top of the crab. Vivi, he begun. She turned to him. What? She asked. When Crocodile and his partner were leaving, I heard them say something about a bomb. He told her. But my hockey, when they were in the corridor. He quickly added when she tried to say something. It's probably in Alubarna, somewhere where lots of soldiers will be. Like near the plaza. What? She yelled. I'm thinking about that clockwork tower that my friend Shanks told me was nearby. Luffy lied. You should stop that from happening. She nodded. Although she looked very surprised, she didn't say anything else. Also, I've told Smokey the same thing and asked him not to attack us in that note. Luffy added. You what? Everyone yelled. Relax, Luffy told them. He's a good guy. He'll keep his promise. Then Luffy saw the golden hook approaching. I even know where it is and about the timer. Luffy added. But how Crocodile tried to say. You lost the moment Vivi met me, Crocodile. At the second we became friends, your plans crashed and burned completely. Luffy interrupted. As for how, Croce. I have friends everywhere. Luffy lied, but not quite. It was true Luffy had or would have friends everywhere, but said friends were mostly only that and would not help him against their own organization. However, Crocodile wouldn't need to know that. His eyes widened again. Mr. Two Misses. All Sunday. He thought. He remembered Luffy's and Robin's interaction and Bone Clay's gloomy mood when he was told he had to fight them. Why you bastard? Crocodile yelled and ran towards Luffy and attacked him. His foe dodged his hook in his attempt to impale him. Armament. Luffy murmured and delivered a heavy punch into the gut of the frenzied sand pirate. Crocodile struggled to keep up and coughed up some more blood. It's straight into impel down for you I'm afraid. Luffy told him. But don't worry, I think we'll meet again. Then I'll be able to yet show you more of my impressions. Crocodile gritted his teeth and clenched his fist in fury. Why is he still standing? Isn't he affected by the poison? He asked himself. Luffy used his observation hockey and noted that Robin was watching from the distance. I knew it. He thought and grinned, but then he was interrupted from further thinking by an enraged crocodile who once again tried to kill him. Luffy kept dodging every attempt, infuriating him further, and then Crocodile used another one of his sandstorm attacks. Luffy avoided it again, but at the top of it, Crocodile was waiting, bearing a slasher smile. This is the end for you. He announced and slashed Luffy across his back with his hook. He gritted his teeth in pain. I screwed up. I didn't use armament fast enough. Luffy thought. He was still fine of course, but in he was in a lot of pain. But despite of that, he grinned. No, exactly the opposite. Luffy replied. This is the beginning. Armament. He murmured and pulled both of his fists back. Desert La Spada Desert Blades. Crocodile yelled and formed four desert blades out of his sand and threw them at Luffy. Gomu Gomu no Bazooka. Luffy announced and snapped his arms forward. He managed to hit straight through the blades, as if they were nothing with his hockey-infused power. His two arms hit Crocodile straight in the chest. The Shichibikai, unable to last any longer, fell down on the ground. He landed near the hole of quicksand that he himself had created. Luffy landed on the ground near him and watched at him for a minute. We'll meet again, Crocodile. I hope you'll change until then. He thought. I never expected this to happen. A soft melodic voice announced. Luffy turned around and saw an astonished looking Robin. So you've returned Nico Robin. Luffy told her. Now, what should I do with you? She crossed her arms, perceiving his words as a threat. You may have defeated Crocodile, but power and speed mean nothing to me, Monkey D. Luffy. She told him, with slight panic in her voice, but she didn't use her power. Don't be a bad girl now. Luffy told her. And you can't break rubber. You'd better not try. Luffy then felt another aura approaching. I've found you. A male voice announced. 
A warrior with white paint on his face and white clothes with black symbols on them approached. It was Pell. But then he noticed Crocodile on the ground, unconscious and looked at Luffy who was observing Mr. Alcindy with her arms crossed. Said woman looked very nervous for the first time he had seen her. And you aren't strong enough to keep me down long enough to suffocate me. Luffy told her, ignoring Pell, who looked from one to the other. He was in control. The whole time. Robin thought. She dropped her hands from her stance. It would seem I'm at your mercy then. She said with a slightly shaken voice. Pell looked at her in surprise. He was astonished by how easily the boy had gotten her to admit her defeat and by using words alone. Yes. Luffy confirmed. But don't worry. As long as you stay a good girl and help me end this war, nothing bad will happen to you. What? Pell yelled. How can you say that? Don't you know what she did? Luffy looked at him. She did bad thing, yes. But all this was his doing. Not hers. He told him and pointed at the fallen warlord. The warrior gritted his teeth but then sighed in resignation. You had your own reasons to comply with Crocodile. Luffy asked Robin. What were they? Robin sighed. There was no point keeping anything from him any longer. Protection. And the chance to see the Poneglyph of Arabasta. I'm searching for the Rio Poneglyph. She told him. Luffy nodded. I can offer you both if you want. But first, we three need to go stop a war. Luffy announced and picked up Crocodile with one of his rubber hands. Let's go. Don't do it. Someone yelled. Vivi and the rest of them looked up to see Pell approaching, carrying three figures and another hanging from the hand of one of them. They stopped what they were doing, which was trying to blow up the palace, and looked at the approaching people. After a few seconds, Pell landed. Thank you Pell. A very well-known voice announced. The bird zone nodded but then collapsed in pain on the floor, just as they were about to dismount. Pell. Vivi yelled in shock. Don't worry about him, Miss Wednesday. He's just tired. A melodic voice announced. You. Vivi screamed. The guards took up their arms in alarm. Miss Alcinde. She helped us get your father, so don't be angry at her, Vivi. Another voice said. Then the three figures stepped towards her. It was Nefertari Cobra, Nyko Robin and Monkey D. Luffy, who was dragging someone with his elastic hand. He's right, Vivi. The king told her. She simply nodded, but then she took note of the man Luffy was dragging. Luffy-san, is that? Yes, that's Crocodile. Luffy interrupted and threw him towards her feet. She, along with several royal guards gasped in awe and disbelief. He gave me a little trouble, but I kicked the crap out of him. Luffy sighed. Get some sea stone cuffs and put them on him, otherwise he'll be a threat again once he wakes up. Luffy told a random guard. The man nodded and ran off somewhere. Luffy then turned to Vivi. Have you found the bomb? Vivi shook her head. I came straight here. Didn't have much choice, you see. She told him. But I did tell the other guys. What bomb? Cobra asked in shock. Robin turned to him. Crocodile put a bomb in the clockwork tower. It's planned to go off soon. She told him. He, along with the guards looked in shock. I've also told the marines. Luffy added. But I don't trust them, so. I'll go to the clockwork tower, then. Pell told from behind them. Luffy turned and nodded. Take Robin here with you. She can help you with any guards. He told him. Pell looked at him skeptically and then at the king, who nodded. Then he shrugged and also nodded. She got on his back and they flew off. Luffy-san. You can't trust her. Vivi yelled once they disappeared into the distance. Luffy shook his head. She won't dare betray me. I have what she wants. He replied. She killed Igram. Vivi yelled. Everyone looked at her in shock, including the king. No. Luffy told her, startling everyone with the information. Igram is alive. Vivi looked at him in shock. She made it look like he died. I wanted to tell you, but if Crocodile knew that he was alive, she'd have no choice but to actually kill him. Luffy told them. Then he turned and walked towards the soon-to-be battlefield. But there's no time to think about all that. He finally said. There's bigger things to worry about. He pointed towards city, from where the rebel army was fast approaching towards them. That rain would be very handy now. Luffy thought. A royal guard finally arrived with sea stone cuffs and restrained crocodile. Then Luffy felt a presence approaching. Vivi. A voice said. Hosa. Vivi shouted upon seeing him. Listen. Vivi. He interrupted. Who was it that stole the country's reign? Crocodile. She said and pointed at the fallen warlord. The rebel leader's eyes widened in shock. This country's hero? He was the one behind everything. He asked. Crocodile was never a hero. Luffy told him and everyone turned to him. He planned all of this, but he doesn't even want the country. Everyone looked at him in horror. What? Vivi yelled. So why did he do all of this? Luffy looked at her. He wanted the ancient weapon, Pluton. He told them. 
He turned then to the king, who looked at him, shocked. You know of this weapon? Cobra nodded. Its location is supposed to be inscribed on the poneglyph underneath the palace. It's what the royal family is protecting. He told them. Luffy nodded. Mrs. Alcindae searched for that stone as well, but for a different reason. That's why she helped him. He told him. Then he walked past them and picked Crocodile up again. Let's go stop a war. Koza looked at him. Sorry, but who are you? He asked. Luffy turned to him. I'm Monkey D. Luffy, a pirate. He answered. Everyone gasped, they didn't know yet. A pirate? Koza asked with narrowed eyes. What's a pirate doing here? I'm the one who brought Vivi back to Arabasta, and I'm the one who beat up this Shichibukai right here. Luffy told him. Koza turned to Vivi. Is that true? He asked her. She smiled and nodded. Let's go now. Luffy interrupted them. The more time we waste, the more people may die. They quickly nodded and went after him. Luffy, Vivi, Cobra and Koza all walked down the stairs that led to the palace. Fly the white flag. Vivi yelled. Everyone looked up. That's right. The king yelled in confirmation. Everyone drop your weapons. Royal army. If we do that, what'll become of the country? One of the royal guards asked. Then they noticed who was walking beside them. That's Koza. What's the rebel leader doing alongside them? A royal soldier asked in shock. Listen to them. He yelled. We no longer want victory or war. This battle must end. They looked at him shocked, very surprised by his words. I'll inform the rebel army that this battle is meaningless. The entire things was caused by this man here. He yelled and pointed a crocodile. Luffy lifted the Shichibukai and put him into a near standing position and used his arm to make crocodile wave with his hook at them. Crocodile? They whispered. Please fly the white flag. He once again asked. I beg of you. They did as he said and took up white flags at the front. The approaching rebel army stopped upon seeing that. Rebel leader Koza also took one and stepped at the front. The other three were behind the royal army. This battle is over. Koza announced at the front. Rebels, calm your anger and throw down your weapons. The royal army no longer wishes to fight. Is that true? One of rebel soldiers in the front asked. Presumably he was one of the people in charge. Yes. The leader confirmed. Then, someone in the ranks of the royal army took out a pistol and fired at him. Luffy noticed this. With Crocodile still safely in his hand, Luffy activated his Soru, and just in time, he intercepted the bullets. He repelled them somewhere in the air. He glared at the one who did this and the man fell down. Haz Hassan. Multiple rebel soldiers yelled as it appeared that he was hit. The leader turned around and noticed his savior. You he whispered in shock. Then Luffy jumped down from the platform that Koza and he were standing on. He stepped in the middle between the two armies and threw Crocodile on the ground. He turned sideways so that he had the royal army on his right and the rebel one on his left. Who is that? Multiple voices asked from both sides. I'm Monkey D. Luffy. He announced. I'm the one who brought Princess Vivi back to her country, and I'm here to stop this war. Luffy San Vivi whispered with tears in her eyes somewhere in the background. The king looked at her and grabbed her arm and smiled to her. You have found a great friend. He told her. She nodded and smiled. This man. Luffy continued and pointed at the fallen enemy. Royal Shichibukai, Sir Crocodile, is the man who caused this war. This caused quite the commotion between the soldiers. They were in a state of disbelief. But Crocodile San. This country's hero. Our savior. And B. Shut up. Luffy yelled and interrupted them. They all put their attention back on him. He used that dance powder thing to make this country dry. Many eyes widened upon hearing this. He and his group Baroque Works are the reason this war even began. He announced. It was their plan all along to have this country fight, but I defeated him and my crew defeated his agents. They started whispering amongst themselves again. If anyone wants to fight any longer, Luffy announced and pulled out his sword. Sorry, Shanks, but I'm stealing your line here. Luffy thought and grinned inwardly. Then fight me. I'll take you all on. He finished. The soldiers gaped at him in disbelief, as well as Koza, Cobra and Vivi, despite already knowing that Luffy was very strong. They couldn't believe what their eyes saw and their ears heard. Luffy San Vivi thought to herself as she looked at him, positioned between the two armies. If not, then everyone drop your weapons. You have no reason to fight anymore. He added after a few minutes. The men looked at each other and after a few moments started dropping their weapons. Luffy could see that even the agents started dropping them, not daring to go against the man that they learned had beaten up the man who they now knew was their boss. Then Luffy sensed another presence among the crowd, a distinctly different one. He saw Ensign Toshigi and two other marines trying to make their way through the rebel army. The soldiers moved out of their way upon seeing the navy insignia. After they made their way through the crowd, Toshigi looked at Luffy with uncertainty. Luffy nodded to her. 
He's all yours. He told her. She nodded and looked at the unconscious Shichibukai. The Baroque Works ship carrying dance powder has been captured. She announced, gaining everyone's attention. Leader of the secret organization, Baroque Works, Royal Shichibukai Pirate, Sir Crocodile. By order of the Marine Headquarters, acting with the authority of the world government, in accordance with the Naval Enemy Seizure Clause, you are henceforth stripped of all titles and privileges granted to you by the government. Luffy grinned. She turned his attention to him now. Straw Hat Luffy. She began. You're a pirate too, but you saved this country, so I thank you. She bowed her head. This earned gasps of surprise, both at learning that Luffy was a pirate and because of a marine thanking a non shichibukai pirate. Did you get rid of the bomb? Luffy asked her. She lifted her head in surprise. She nodded. Then he was the one who bowed his head. Then I have to say thanks too. He told her. She looked at him in total surprise, as did many of the onlookers. Now listen up. He yelled out. As of today, I'm putting Arabasta under the protection of the flag of the Straw Hat Pirates. If anyone dares to do anything like this in Vivi's country again, I'll beat them up like I beat up Crocodile. Luffy San. After a while, the soldiers of Arabasta were in for another shock, as soon after rain started falling again. After a while, Igram also arrived, carrying the child survivor from Nanahana, who confirmed everything Luffy and Koza said. Hey guys. Luffy greeted cheerfully. The straw hats lying on the floor grunted in greeting. Luffy approached them and sat on the floor next to them. You look beaten up. He commented. That's because we were. They yelled at him with shark teeth. Luffy scratched his head and laughed sheepishly. Sorry, sorry. He apologized insincerely. Anyway, when you guys can move we're invited to the palace. They're preparing a feast for us. So that's why you're so happy Nami asked him. Luffy laughed. Well, partly. Because of that and because of how cool I looked when I stopped the war. Luffy announced. What? Everyone yelled. Luffy stood up and pulled out his sword. Yeah, the royal army was on the right and the rebels were on the left. I had crocodile lying at my feet. And I was like. If you guys want to continue fighting, I'm kicking all your asses. He announced and raised his chest proudly. Really? Chopper and Yusuf beamed. Luffy nodded. You're so cool, Luffy. Chopper told him with stars in his eyes. Luffy laughed embarrassed. The rest of them looked shocked at Luffy. Why you actually did that? Zoro asked. Luffy nodded. And I looked awesome, didn't I, Robin? Luffy asked and looked behind him. I'm sure you did. A flowery voice announced. Nico Robin stepped up to Luffy. Everyone tensed up. Ah, you weren't watching. Luffy asked with a disappointed voice. She shook her head. Luffy, what's Miss Alcindae doing here? Zoro asked. Everyone was now standing, gripping their weapons. Nico Robin here is part of our crew now. Luffy announced. What? Flashback. Hey Vivi, King, could you guys take me and Nico Robin here to see your poneglyph? Luffy asked. They were met with shocked stares. Luffy San, you can't be serious. That stone most likely tells about the ancient weapon. Vivi shouted. I have no interest in weapons. I only wish to see the Rio Poneglyph. Robin told her. Cobra looked at them skeptically. Even so, it's too dangerous. He said. Luffy shook his head. Nico Robin is on her own now. I don't think she can do much with the information if she's alone. He replied. She nodded. Well, I guess then it wouldn't hurt. Cobra replied. A few minutes later. Robin stood in the chamber underneath the palace and looked at the large stone, known as the Poneglyph. She spent a few minutes reading the writing on it. Luffy, Vivi and the king kept their distance and looked from the corridor. When she turned around, Vivi and Cobra were startled. She had tears falling down her face. She looked completely defeated. Ah Robin. Luffy thought sadly. It wasn't it. She said simply and looked at the ground. It tells the location of Pluton, like I thought. This was my final and only lead, but it isn't what I hoped it'd be. What did you want it to be? The king asked. The Rio Poneglyph. Out of the Poneglyphs existing in the world, it's the one stone that tells the true history. The true history? Vivi asked. What is that? It tells about the missing period of time. The true about the void century. She told her. Luffy nodded. Shanks told me about this. Luffy lied. Everyone looked at him. Everything from that period has been covered up by the government. But he didn't tell me what happened. Shanks. Robin repeated. But how could he know what happened? Nobody knows. Luffy shook his head. Shanks does. He told them. But he said that if I want to know, I should find out on my own. You don't mean red-haired Shanks, one of the four emperors? Robin asked with a wide-eyed expression. He can't mean Cobra began. Yes. Luffy interrupted. He ignored their shocked expressions and looked at Robin. Your dream is to learn of the void century? He asked her. She nodded. 
What a foolish dream Luffy told her. She looked down on the ground again. But nowhere near as foolish as mine. He finished and grinned. She looked at him with a shocked expression. You have nowhere to go, is that right? He asked her. She shook her head sadly. Then come with me and my crew. What? She asked quietly. Vivi and Cobra looked at him. We all have really stupid and impossible dreams, Nico Robin. You'd fit right in. Luffy answered. I don't know what to say. Robin told him. Luffy grinned. Just say yes. He shouted. She smiled. But is it really alright? She asked. I was your enemy. I helped Crocodile. Luffy shook his head. That's all in the past now. He told her. Besides, you helped us save Vivi's country. He's right. Vivi interjected. Robin looked at her in shock. You, she whispered. Vivi simply smiled. All right, Monkey D. Luffy, I'll join your crew. She replied after a moment of silence. That's a good girl. Luffy answered. Could you please stop calling me that? So there, that's what happened. Luffy told them. Also, could you show them your cool powers, Robin? She crossed her arms, and two hands grew out of Luffy's hat, one on each side. Shishishi. See, I'm Chopper now. He said. Chopper and Yusa plucked at him and started laughing, despite being in a bad condition. Sanji, of course, wasn't even attempting to oppose her joining, but Zoro and Nami looked at her nervously. You're not going to convince me so easily. Nami announced and kicked the ground. Robin looked at her smugly. Ah, by the way, I have some of Crocodile's jewels. She announced and pulled out a small bag. Nami's eyes turned into Barry. Ah, I love you, big sister. She shouted and quickly took the bag. Everyone's sweat dropped. So much for not being convinced easily. Luffy thought to himself and grinned. Now the only one remaining was Zoro, but Luffy knew she'd prove herself to him in battle. Now let's go to the palace, guys. I have an interview waiting. Luffy chirped out. Interview? Everyone repeated. They started getting up again. Yes. Robin confirmed. It seems the Arabasta newspaper wants an interview of their savior. Luffy laughed cheerfully. Everyone's sweat dropped. You're enjoying this way too much, Luffy. Zoro yelled. Luffy scratched his head sheepishly. Why wouldn't he? Robin asked. He's a hero now after all. Hey now. Luffy told her and pointed her sword, which was still in his hand, in her direction. She flinched slightly. I'm not a hero. Everyone looked at him weirdly. What are you talking about, Luffy? Nami asked, bewildered. Of course you are. Luffy sheathed his sword and huffed like he was terribly offended. Do you even know what a hero is? He asked them. They just stared at him. Let's say you have a piece of meat. A hero will share his meat. But I want it all for myself. That's how he describes a hero. Nami asked herself. A few of them laughed. Now let's go. I want my meat. And my interview. And I need to call Whitebeard already. Luffy announced. Robin looked at him wide-eyed. You were serious about that? She asked. He nodded. Of course. My brothers Ace and Sabo are part of his crew, and Ace gave me his number. Luffy told her. Are they Firefist and Blue Gentlemen? She asked. Luffy nodded. Wow. For one to have such connections to the crew of not one, but two Yonku. Robin thought. The Straw Hat Pirates then finally all stood up. Luffy wordlessly assisted Zoro, who seemed the most damaged, while Robin proceeded to carry in her arms the cute little chopper, much to his panic protests and Sanji's jealous sulking, and helped the also very beaten up Yusuf, much to the protests of the navigator, who claimed she was more damaged. But she calmed down when Sanji supported her, with a heart in his eye. A few minutes later, in the palace. After entering the palace, the royal guard immediately noticed how beaten up the crew was, so they got them to a guest room with several beds in it. The exhausted crew members immediately fell down into their beds, and a few of them dozed off, most notably Zoro and Yusuf. Topper didn't allow himself to rest however, as he wanted to treat all their wounds, but then the Arabasta doctors arrived and made him their first patient. Luffy looked proudly at his Nakama, but then he suddenly fell on his knees, making the others panic. Damn poison. Forgot about it. He thought. The doctors tried to get to him, but he motioned them to stop. But Luffy, they have to treat you. Chopper yelled with tears in his eyes. Luffy looked at him. It's fine. I only forgot to take the antidote to Crocodile's poison. He told them. Everyone looked at him as he sat on the floor and took the black box from his pocket and opened it. He took a tiny bottle from it, opened it and drank. How could you forget that you were poisoned, moron? Nami yelled at him. Luffy just laughed. Oh. Luffy exclaimed, startling everyone. He bumped himself on the head. Do you guys have a den den mushy here? I need to call Whitebeard. The doctors looked at him with wide eyes. Then one of them nodded. You should ask one of the royal guards to get one for you. He told Luffy. He nodded and stormed out. 
after a few minutes, when the doctors were already gone, except Chopper, he returned with a plate and a Den Den Mushy on it. Is he really going to do that? Robin asked herself. Luffy San. Someone yelled. He turned around and noticed Vivi. Is everyone alright? Yes, everyone's fine, but I'd like to call Shirohij now, so everyone be quiet and close the door. Luffy commanded. She did as he said and sat on one of the beds. Luffy sat on the sofa and put the platter on the table next to it. Robin and Nami sat next to him. Now remember. This is a conversation between two captains, so be quiet. He ordered. Luffy pulled out a paper from his pocket and called the number on it. Hello. Moosh moosh. He greeted. Hello. A bored sounding voice asked. Who is this, Yoi? Ah, the Phoenix guy. Luffy thought. Is this the Moby Dick, the ship of Yonku, Whitebeard? He asked aloud. Yes it is, Yoi. The man replied. Everyone in the room gasped. My name is Marco, First Division Commander. Who are you, Yoi? I can't believe this. Nami thought. First Division Commander of the Whitebeard Pirates. I'm Monkey D. Luffy, Captain of the Straw Hat Pirates. Luffy replied cheerfully. Luffy? The man repeated, but then he realized something. Ah, you must be Aces and Sabo's brother, right? That's right. Luffy replied. So why are you calling, Luffy? Marco asked. I'd like to talk with your captain and Sabo. Luffy told him. The line was silent for a moment. Oh I, Sabo. Come here, Yoi. The man yelled. What is it? Another voice asked. It's your brother, Yoi. Marco answered. Ace. The voice asked. No Luffy. Marco replied. LL Luffy. Who gave him this number? The voice stuttered. Ace. Luffy answered to them. Then they heard someone walking and picking up the Den Den Mushy. Hi Luffy. How have you been? Sabo finally asked. This time his voice sounded louder as he was talking directly into the device. I'm good, Sabo. Great, actually. I just beat up Crocodile and we're about to celebrate. Luffy replied. CC Crocodile. Sir Crocodile. Of the Shichibukai. Sabo stuttered. Yep. Luffy replied. Is that surprising? He could hear Marco chuckling in the background and Sabo trying to say something. H how the hell did you beat Crocodile? He finally asked. Luffy laughed. I used water, since he's a sand loja. Then I punched him a few times. Shishi shishi. He replied. Robin narrowed her eyes suspiciously. He didn't use water. He didn't have to. She thought to herself. So why is he lying? And then I claimed Arabasta as my own. Luffy added after a moment as Sabo didn't seem to be able to say anything. What? Everyone except Vivi and Luffy yelled. Shishishi. You guys are all so funny. Why are you so surprised, Sabo, Marco? Luffy asked. Oh and I stopped the war in Arabasta. I basically stood between the two armies and told them I'd beat them all up if they continued fighting. It was so cool. Then everyone was startled to hear uncontrollable laughter from none other than the first division commander. Marco, stop it. Stop it. Why are you even laughing? Sabo yelled. Ha ha, sorry Sabo, but you and Ace are complete wimps compared to this guy. Marco replied. Luffy grinned and laughed. Shishishi. Thanks. Prepare to see my bounty double, Sabo. He told them. Hoi, which Shichibukai should I beat up next? Is Gecko Moria anywhere near Arabasta? Don't even think about it, Luffy. Sabo yelled, while Marco roared in laughter in the background. And you. Don't encourage him. Is he serious? Nami thought. I thought Crocodile was scary enough. Luffy is so cool. Chopper thought and looked at his captain in admiration. So how have you been doing, Sabo? Is it true Blackbeard killed a crew member? Luffy asked. This sobered them up immediately. Marco's laughter stopped. Almost. He replied somberly. Luffy's eyes widened. Thatch is alive. Luffy thought surprised. I actually found Thatch just in time before he bled out, yoi. Thanks to you I might add. Marco finished. Every Straw Hat member gasped in surprise at this new development. Thanks to me. Luffy repeated in confusion. Yes. Sabo told me about some kind of weird warning you gave him when you were a kid, Yoi. I remembered about that and Tichin got a really bad feeling, so I went to check on them. Turns out you were right in his case. Marco replied. So, you're saying Blackbeard is a big fat ugly guy with bushy chest hair that likes pies? Luffy asked in a deadpan voice. Yes, actually, Yoi. Marco replied. Why pies though? I hate pies. Luffy replied. So, is he going to make it? Marco sighed. Too soon to tell, Yoi. Thatch is still fighting for his life. He replied. I see. But why does Ace think he's dead? Luffy asked. Marco signed once again. When he saw Thatch lying in a pool of blood he assumed the worst and stormed off. He replied. 
I hope he recovers soon. Luffy told him. Thanks, I hope so too. Marco replied. Now, Pops is resting, but I can take the Den Den Mushy to him if you wish. Okay. Luffy replied. See you soon Luffy. Sabu yelled. Luffy smirked. Sure. He answered. Don't tell me, he really is going to speak to the Great Whitebeard. Thought Nami in shock. They heard the sound of walking, and then Marco knocked on a door. Luffy-san, you should be careful how you speak to him. Vivi thought, nervous. Come in. A loud, booming voice announced. This startled the two sleeping Nakama awake. What's going on? Yusuf and Zoro asked at almost the same time. Captain San is going to talk to Whitebeard. Robin told them. Really? They both asked. Yusuf seemed scared as hell, while Zoro seemed excited. Edward Newgate, the strongest man in the world. Zoro thought and grinned. Ops, I have someone who wants to talk to you. They heard Marco say. Someone else groaned in annoyance. I thought I told that red-haired brat to stop calling me and come in person. Whitebeard commented. This is definitely Edward Newgate. Robin thought in shock. He refers to red-haired Shanks as a brat. Yusuf thought in panic. What has Luffy gotten himself into? It's not red-haired, Yoi. It's Aces and Sabo's little brother, Straw Hat Luffy. The one with the incredible first bounty. Marco told him. Luffy smirked proudly. Hey, old man. Luffy yelled. The entire Straw Hat crew cringed at this. Give me the Den Den Mushy, Marco. Whitebeard said calmly. Hey brat. He greeted after a few moments. So you're their little brother? That's right. Luffy replied. So why are you calling? Do you want to become my son like they have? Whitebeard asked. The Straw Hats were shocked. He's so quick to offer him to join the crew. They thought. Luffy laughed, much to the horror of some of his crew members. Luffy, don't provoke him. Please don't provoke him. Thought Nami and Yusuf while nearly praying. Chopper just thought Luffy was super cool and looked at him in awe, while Robin had a troubled expression. Sanji and Zoro just smirked. No, no, the Pirate King can't have a captain. Luffy finally replied, and this caused the navigator and sniper to become even more scared. There was silence from the other side for a moment. Urarara. Pirate King, eh? Whitebeard asked. You're one cheeky brat, aren't you? And you have one really big dream. Shishishi, I guess so. Luffy replied to him. Nami and Yusuf sighed in relief. So why are you calling me, brat? He asked. I wanted to thank you for taking care of my brothers. Especially Ace. Do you know about Luffy began? Yes. I do. Whitebeard interrupted. But it's no problem, kid. They are my sons now. Luffy grinned. That's good. Luffy replied. I'm really glad they found their place. Especially Ace. He was really messed up as a kid because of you know. How so? Whitebeard asked. What are they talking about? Thought everyone. Well, Luffy began. Ace was really nasty when I first met him. I'm often told I have no manners, but he was much, much worse than that. This information shocked the ones that met Ace, that is. Everyone except Robin. He had no manners at all. Even worse. He actually spat at me when we first met, without even knowing anything about me. Luffy told him. No way. Nami thought with her eyes wide. There's no way Ace was like that. All because of that. Sabo wasn't as bad, but he had his problems too. So that's why I'm glad you gave them a family. Luffy finished. I see. Whitebeard replied quietly. There's one thing I'd like to ask though. Luffy told him. What is it? The Yonku asked. If we meet Blackbeard, Luffy began. What should we do? There was silence for a few moments. If you meet him, don't fight unless you have to, Brad. The Yonku warned. This will be settled by the Whitebeard pirates, so don't interfere. Your brother will handle it. I see. Luffy replied, but inwardly he cursed. I'll do as you asked. Good. I hope we meet soon, Brad. Whitebeard said. Luffy smiled. I have a feeling it'll be sooner than you think, old man. He replied. Urara, cheeky brat. The Yonku replied and hang up. Luffy sighed. Damn it. Luffy thought. Now, it's unavoidable. What the hell was that? Nami yelled at him. What? What did I do? Luffy asked her. Why did you talk to him that way? He's the strongest man in the world. She continued. Nami, stop yelling. Shirohij Asen hates wimps anyway. After lots of resting, an interview and a huge feast, where the king and his royal guards got a real taste of what a pirate banquet feels like, the Straw Hat Pirates were invited to the Zoro was washing Chopper's back while Luffy and Yusuf messed around. The king simply sat down with his legs in the water. Hey, where's the girl's bath? Sanji asked with a perverted expression and poked Igram with his elbow. Igram slapped Sanji's hand away angrily. You idiot. He yelled. Like I'd tell that to someone like you. Vivi-sama is in there. Come on. 
Don't be so stingy. Sanji replied. It's right over that wall. Cobra announced and pointed. Your majesty, you bastard. Igram yelled. Oh, I like your style. Yusuf told him. Everyone quickly ran over to the wall. This feels so good. They heard Nami say as they looked over the wall. I wonder if any ships out there have baths this big on them. I'm sure there are, Vivi replied. The sea is so vast. We've seen giants, dinosaurs, Sakura bloom in the land of snow, the sea must contain many more unbelievable things. I have to agree. I'm sure civilian cruise ships as well as a few pirate ships have them. Robin added. Wait a minute, what is everyone doing up there? Vivi asked as she turned around and finally noticed Cobra, Sanji, Yusuf, Igaram the hypocrite, eyelashes, Chopper and Luffy, all peeking at them. Those guys. Nami said and sighed. All right, it'll be 100.000 berry each. She walked over from the bath towards them. The other two girls looked at her in confusion. Happiness punch. She announced and opened her bath robe, revealing her features. Everyone fell down from a nosebleed, except Chopper, who looked in confusion and Luffy who laughed and did a thumbs up. Then he quickly jumped down to the other guys and wiped his own, less noticeable nosebleed. Nami-san. Vivi yelled with a blush, while Robin just chuckled. Why wasn't he affected? Nami asked the other two. They shrugged. Maybe he's gay. Nami concluded on her own after a few moments. Luffy, who was listening from the other side of the wall, smirked. Then soon, the rest of the guys managed to stand up, a few of them with hearts in their eyes. Maybe he just isn't as perverted. Robin suggested. But then everyone was interrupted from their thoughts by squeaking. A bat made its way into the baths. Luffy's and Cobra's eyes widened upon seeing this, but nobody else knew what to think upon seeing this. I it's from the world government. Cobra told them with a shaken voice. He took the message from the bat and read the writing on the envelope. He gave it to Luffy, who took it and looked at everyone in surprise. DT that's bad. Yusuf stuttered with a panicked expression. They're probably saying we should prepare ourselves to die or something. Don't be ridiculous. Sanji yelled at him. We saved one of their countries. There is no way it says that. Zoro just stared at the envelope while Chopper looked at what Luffy will do. What's that, guys? Nami yelled from the other side of the wall. Luffy got a message directly from the government. Yusuf yelled. What? All three of the girls came running to the men's bath, much to the pleasure of a few perverted men, namely all of them d. Is it true, Luffy-san? Vivi stuttered. Luffy nodded. Then he turned his attention to the envelope. It said. Do. Monkey D. Luffy. From. Navy headquarters at Marineford, the world government. Luffy slowly began unwrapping the paper. Robin's eyes were wide. It can't be she thought. It's not possible. Cobra had much the same conclusion as Robin, but the rest of them didn't really know what it could be. Luffy's eyes widened in shock as he read the letter. Monkey D. Luffy. Captain of the Straw Hat Pirates. Also known as Straw Hat Luffy. Due to your recent defeat of the traitorous ex-royal Shichibukai, Sir Crocodile, also known as the leader of the Organization of Baroque Works, as well as the saving of Arabasta, a member kingdom of the world government, you have been deemed worthy to take the now vacant seat as one of the royal Shichibukai. If you accept this offer, your bounty and the bounties of your crew will be revoked, and you will be able to operate as one of the only seven government-sanctioned pirate warlords. You will be granted protection by the government as well as several other privileges, which include the use of the government-exclusive Terai current, the ability to request transportation on any government vessel, the ability to start earning money the legitimate way, as well as by hunting other non shichibikai pirates as well as many others, which may be discussed. You may act in any part of the sea, but you must stay within the Grand Line, you may leave it for short periods of time if required. Of course, in return for your position, you will be required to stop any activities that go directly against the laws of the world government. In addition, you will be required to obey any direct orders from the head of the government or the navy. If you should go against government laws, disobey your orders, be publicly defeated or humiliated or resign yourself, your bounty will once again become active and you'll be hunted once more. Should you accept, your position will be given immediately, and your presence will be required at Navy headquarters at Marineford to discuss your personal agreement with the government. You will become known as the Royal Shichibukai, Sir Monkey D. Luffy. If you are unable to come to the meeting by your own means, a government boat will be dispatched to pick you up. Becoming one of the government-sanctioned pirates is a great honor and is rarely given to new players in the pirate world such as yourself, however you have proven yourself worthy first with your actions in East Blue and now in the Kingdom of Arabasta, here on the pirate graveyard. As a result of your actions, you have gained a reputation for yourself practically overnight. You should also feel honored that while in normal circumstances a meeting is called between the Navy and the Shichibikai to determine the new member, the heads of the government themselves have decided to forego all that and invite you immediately. 
Should you refuse our very generous offer, your bounty will be updated to fit with your newly recorded level of strength, and you will be hunted down like any other pirate. We wait for your answer and hope you'll make the right choice. Ice Admiral Tsuru. On behalf of the Fleet Admiral of the Marine HQ and the World Government. Luffy started laughing almost hysterically upon reading the entire letter. Zoro pulled the note from his hand and read it. I can't believe it. He stuttered. Everyone looked at him, now really on edge. What? Nami asked nervously. Zoro looked at them. Luffy, he started. I've been invited to become a Shichibukai. Shishishishi. Luffy interrupted. Everyone's jaw dropped on the ground. What? Two days later. Somewhere in the new world. Ahahaha. I can't believe this guy. Shanks laughed loudly and threw a newspaper at the ground. Didn't you just complain you had a hangover, red-haired? Dracula Mihik asked in an annoyed voice. I feel much better now, Hawkeyes. Shanks replied. Of course you do. Hawkeyes replied. Shanks nodded. So, did you teach him to be so dramatic, red hair? Mihik asked. I didn't teach him anything. Luffy is crazy enough on his own. Shanks told him. Mihik looked at him oddly. Really? Because that sounds a lot like your handiwork, red haired. The Shichibukai replied. It does? Shanks asked. Mihik sighed in annoyance. Shanks just laughed and started drinking from a cup of sake. Anyway, your friend Straw Hat has been offered a Shichibukai seat. Mihik told him. Shanks spat out his sake and looked at his rival in shock. Then he started laughing again. Do you think he accepted? Mihik interrupted. Shanks looked at him like he grew three heads and continued laughing. Ahahaha. You must be stupid, Hawkeyes. He finally replied, after a few moments of laughing and annoying the Shichibukai. I don't want to be told that by someone like you, Akagami. Mihik replied and sighed. Did you also read the interview? Yes. I think Arabasta loves him right now. He's probably treated like a celebrity there. Gahahaha. Shanks told him. By the way, why do you have a subscription to the Arabasta newspaper, Takanomi? The Shichibukai sighed. Didn't I already tell you twice? He asked. I visited Alubarna once and slept in a hotel. Oh, right. Shanks interrupted. Some bandits caused trouble and interrupted your nap, so you beat them, and then they gave you the subscription and thanks. Exactly. Mihik replied. Now. Give me pen and paper. I need to write anchor a letter. Shanks commanded. Several people groaned. Did you have to shout, boss? My head will explode. One of them complained. Ha 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 ha. Wimps. On the floor next to Shanks was the Arabasta newspaper, with a photo of Luffy, Vivi, the King and Koza, standing next to each other on the cover, along with a photo of Luffy and Ensign Toshigi, facing each other with Crocodile on the ground between them. Underneath the two photos it was written in large bold letters. The war is over. The first four pages of the newspaper dealt exclusively with the war, detailing the actions of the Rebellion, Royal Army, Crocodile and lastly Vivi and Luffy, who got most of the glory for stopping the war. On the fifth page began the interview. The interview with Monkey D. Luffy, the man who stopped the war. Monkey D. Luffy, the pirate captain of the Straw Hat Pirates, also known as Straw Hat Luffy, is the man who brought Princess Nefertari Vivi back to Urbasta and is along with his crew, responsible for the end of hostilities in our country. He has personally defeated the ex-royal Shichibukai responsible for the war, the man we believed was our hero, Sir Crocodile. So tell me, Luffy-san, how does it feel like to be our country's hero? Well. Now let me stop you right there. I'm not a hero. Like my crew you don't even know what a hero is. Let's say you have a piece of meat. Pirates will eat the meat, but a hero will take the meat and share it. I want all the meat. So I can't be a hero, can I? I. Um right, so then how do you explain your selfless actions that help save Arabasta and many of its citizens? Bell. For that you should mostly thank Vivi, the princess of Arabasta. I. How did you meet the princess anyway? Bell. At first we were enemies. She actually worked for Crocodile's group, the Ballet Works, or whatever it was. I. Its name was Baroque Works. L. Right. She worked for him, trying to find as much information about his group as possible. But, when she found out who the boss was she was targeted by his assassins. I think it was the Mr. Five Pair. Both of them had devil fruits. I. So why did you save her? L. For money, first. Laughs, my navigator really loves money, so she thought we'd get a lot of it if we saved her. I agreed, because money can get you meat. I. Right. So what changed? L. Well, after Zoro beat up the two agents and I saved her, she told us about her country and the war, and by accident she told us that it was Crocodile's fault. I. By accident. The princess revealed his name by accident. L. Laughs, yep. So then we had no choice but to take her aboard, since we were immediately targeted ourselves. 
but after a while we became friends in the comma. I. So why did you decide to help her save the country other than for being a hero? L. I'm not a hero and my crew are not heroes because we didn't save the country for the people or the king or to stop people from dying or any other heroic reason like that. I. Then why did you? L. For her. Vivi. One of our own. She was always sad, always worrying about her country. She rarely ever smiled and I couldn't stand that. I. Why you did all that to make a friend that you knew for only a few weeks, smile. L. It doesn't matter how much time you know a friend if the friendship is real. And a comma is more than that. It's family, practically. I. If only more pirates would think like that. Now I'd like to ask you how you felt when you were standing between the two armies. Were you scared? L. Not really and I'll tell you why. First of all because I thought it was so cool to be doing that. Second, I knew that most of the soldiers wouldn't fight anymore. And third, I have the coolest devil fruit ever, so I wasn't too worried. I. What about crocodile? Did you feel afraid while facing one of the Shichibukai? More importantly, how did you beat him, especially since he has a powerful Oja Devil Fruit ability? L. I wasn't scared, since I knew what I was facing and how to win. Sir Crocodile has the Loja Devil Fruit Suna Suna no Mi, which is powerful, but has a major weakness, which is water. So, by making him wet, I was able to weaken him and defeat him. Without it, I would probably be defeated pretty easily, since I don't really know how to even fight Loja Devil Fruit users in general. But using the water and crocodile's own overconfidence against him, I was able to defeat him pretty fast and easy, considering how powerful he is. I still got wounded though, but nothing too serious. I. You mentioned you have eaten one of the rare devil fruits. Which one? When did you eat it and is it better than the rest and if it is, why? L. When I was seven, a great pirate came into my village. He had the gomu gomu no mi, and I ate it on accident. It literally turned my whole body into rubber. It's not nearly as destructive as many of the other devil fruits, but it's a great devil fruit anyway. I'm often told that my devil fruit is useless or stupid, but those people often have no idea at all of what I can do with it. I wouldn't change it for any other. I. So, you put Arabasta under your protection. What exactly do you want in return? L. Nothing. I didn't demand anything, but there are things I expect from this island. Firstly, I expect to be safe here. I don't want any marines chasing me while I'm here. Secondly, I expect a place to stay and supplies whenever I stop here. The king has already promised all of that to us. I. Are there any other places under your protection? L. Yes, Konomi Islands in East Blue and Drum Island here on the Grand Line. My home island doesn't need protection though, as it's already under the direct supervision of a trustworthy marine. I. What is your relationship with marines in general? L. I never attack first, but marines seem to be exceptionally hostile towards any and all pirates, so I often have no choice but to fight them. I don't hate them for that, but I do find it very annoying. I. What about civilians and other pirates? L. I never attack civilians, but I would attack other pirates if we needed money. I. Is there anything you'd like to say to the people of Arabasta? L. You are lucky to have such a king and princess. You rarely see rulers who actually care this much about their people. Actually, not two weeks ago, I've kicked the very hated King Wapple out of the Drum Kingdom. I. I see. Is there anything you'd like to say in general? L. Live without regrets. Follow your dream if you have one. And lastly, if you hurt one of my Nakama or friends or any island under my protection, you'd better pay for your funeral. I. Thank you, Monkey D. Luffy. L. No problem. Somewhere else in the New World, on the Moby Dick. The Moby Dick journeyed towards one of the islands under their protection. Like I said, complete wimps, yoy. Marco announced as he showed the newspaper around. On the front page was the title. The Straw Hat Pirate defeated Shichibukai Crocodile and stopped the war in Arabasta. Urrarara. I have to agree with Marco. Whitebeard announced with his booming voice. Pops. You traitor. Sabu yelled. His captain just laughed louder. So this is your little brother, Sabo. Vista asked as he saw the photo of Luffy facing Toshigi on the front page. Sabo sighed. Yeah. That's Luffy. He told them. He's pretty cool. Cooler than the other two brothers. Harita announced in a cold matter-of-fact voice, without any hint of mercy. Hey. That hurts. Sabu yelled at her. Hey, Haruda, that's pretty mean. Jozu told her. Ace is probably freaking out right now, yoi. Marco suggested and laughed some more. Sabo sighed. You'd be freaking out too if your little brother did something this crazy. Sabo told him. Marco chuckled. I detect jealousy. Marco chirped out. I'm not jealous. Sabo yelled. Anyway. Marco continued. 
It says here that he's been sent a Shichibukai invitation. Sabo's jaw and a few others crashed into the ground. Are you freaking kidding? He yelled. Ace only got one when he was already in the new world. Ah, so you are jealous. Hahaha. <laughs> Marco teased. I'm not jealous. At Navy Headquarters, Marineford, Fleet Admiral's office. Arp. Sengoku yelled furiously. The Vice Admiral crashed through the door, nearly throwing it off the hinges. What is it, Sengoku? He asked. It's your damn grandson again, Garp. Sengoku told him with gritted teeth. Wahahaha. What did he do this time? Garp asked him, amused. Not only did he defeat Crocodile the Fleet Admiral started. Wahahaha. That's my grandson. Garp interjected. And stop the war he continued in irritation. So, my grandson is not only strong, but cool too. Garp interrupted again with a smirk on his face. Sengoku gritted his teeth in annoyance at his friend's antics. And made sure that every single person in the world now knows that a warlord has been defeated, but he continued. So, I don't see the problem. Garp interrupted. Arp. Just shut up. Sengoku yelled again and sighed. He also just had to refuse the Shichibukai position. Wahahahaha. <laughs> shut up. Sengoku shouted and punched the roaring Vice Admiral on the head. Just look at this. He even dared to insult and threaten us in his reply. The fleet admiral threw a piece of paper at his friend. Garp caught it and started reading. He started laughing at the first sentence. Do. Navy HQ and the world government. Hi, Seagull Asin and the rest of you jerks. I've become a pirate because of two reasons and those are. My freedom and my dream. If I accepted your stupid little title offer, I'd lose both. Plus any respect I may have gained. While I am flattered that the government thinks I'm dangerous, I can assure you that I have no intention of attacking any of government or civilian ships, and I certainly don't intend on raiding any government-owned or protected islands. But, since that doesn't matter to you and you want to kill me anyway for flying a pirate flag and beating up those two marine officers who were corrupt anyway, as well as beating up pirates, which was supposed to be your job, see Golasin, so I thought I'd give you a little warning in advance. I'll tolerate any attacks on the Straw Hat pirates as a whole. Since that's your job, which you suck at by the way, but should any member of our group be targeted individually or should any of our islands be threatened, we will respond. I hope you find the replacement Shichibukai soon. Monkey D. Luffy. Future Pirate King. P.S. Say hi to Gramps. Seagulas and Wahahaha. Arp. Somewhere in paradise. Ace was on his tiny little boat and was heading to the next island when a news coup bird dropped above him and offered him a newspaper. Ace stopped his boat and gave the bird money and took one of the newspapers. Upon seeing the headline, he blinked a few times to confirm what he was seeing. Then his eyes traveled to the large picture of Luffy, Toshigi and Crocodile. Finally he looked below the picture and noticed the writing. About the War of Arabasta, Crocodile's involvement in Straw Hat Luffy, who stopped the two warring factions by standing between them. His jaw finally crashed into the boat. Two days later. The Royal Guard entered the Straw Hat Pirate's room. Someone is requesting to talk to you. He said his name is Bone Chan. He told them. In his hand he carried a silver platter with a den den mushy. Luffy immediately took it. Oosh moosh. Hello. Ga ha ha ha. It's me. It's me. Ga ha ha ha. A voice asked. Robin's eyes widened. Why is Mr. Two Bone Clay calling us? She thought. Oh, it's you. Luffy said. What do you want? Ara, it's this the voice of Mugi Chan. Bentham asked. You're so strong. I was so surprised. You beat Zero Chan. Oh, yes, yes, don't go calling me Mr. Two. If the Marines find about this, I'll be in super big trouble. He just said it himself. Chopper yelled. Just spit it out. Commanded Zoro. Oh right. I took your little ship. Mr. Two announced. What? Everyone yelled with shark teeth. Asshole, that's not funny. Said Usopp. Where are you now? I'm on your blue eight. Bone Claire replied. Damn it, Sanji cursed. Of all the annoying bastards. You've got it all wrong. All wrong. Bentham interrupted. Aren't we friends? Gayahaha. Gayahaha. A few minutes later. So that's why we're leaving. Luffy finished. He turned to Vivi, who stared at him, saddened by the news. Hey, everyone. She asked. What should I do? Listen, Vivi. Nami told her. We'll give you 12 hours to think about it. After we take our ship back on the Sandora River, then exactly at noon tomorrow, we'll swing the ship past the eastern harbor once. We won't be able to drop anchor, so that'll be your only chance if you decide to continue adventuring with us. If so, we'll celebrate. Like pirates. You're the princess of this kingdom, so this is the best invitation we can give you. Sanji told her. Why do you even have to leave already, everyone? Vivi asked them. Father has forbidden chasing you guys in the kingdom. 
but marines can still stop us on the sea. Zoro told her. They don't exactly have to follow the king's commands on the ocean. And they won't. They'll try to get the ship. Luffy nodded. Nami's eyes twitched. That's all because this guy she said in an irritated voice and bonked Luffy on the head. Refused the Shichibikai position. Moron. Sorry Nami. Luffy told her. But I don't want to take orders from anyone. Then Robin approached Vivi. Princess Anne, I wanted to apologize. Robin started and bowed her head. I've caused you a lot of grief as Crocodile's partner. Vivi smiled. I've already forgiven you, Robin San. You did help us in the end. She told her and Robin looked at her in shock. But Robin started. It's okay. Vivi interrupted. Come with us, Vivi. Luffy yelled. And then they left. A few minutes later Igram came running into the room with two wanted posters. They fell on the floor as he noticed the pirates were already gone. Arano is Oro. Wanted dead or alive. 60.000.000, Barry. And. Monkey D. Luffy. Wanted dead or alive. 160.000.000, Barry. I was waiting for you guys. Bone Clay yelled from the crow's nest. How lovely to see you again. Bone Chan. Luffy yelled, but the rest completely ignored the poor agent. Alright, we made it. Zoro announced. Yosh, unload our stuff. Sanji said. Thank you a lot, guys. This is farewell to you as well. Yusuf told the ducks. Take care while going home. Zoro told them. Say hi to the king and rolls Asen. Luffy yelled. Stay well. Chopper yelled and everyone waved at them and the ducks waved back. Someday, someday let us meet again. Bone Clay yelled and waved with tears in his eyes for some reason. Wait a minute. He then yelled as he realized they all totally ignored him except Luffy. What kind of attitude is that towards your friend? Are we still friends, Bone Chan? Luffy asked, although he already knew the answer. Of course we are, Yugi Chan. Bone Clay told him. But you tricked us. Yusuf yelled. MR.2 shook his head. I did not trick you. He replied. I didn't know either. But really, that's all in the past now. Baroque works has crumbled. We aren't enemies anymore. But then he noticed Robin, who stood by herself and looked at him. MM Miss Alcinde, what are you doing here? He asked panicked. Calm down, Bone Chan. Luffy interrupted. Her real name is Nyko Robin. She joined our crew. Really? He asked. Everyone nodded. Oh, that is so wonderful. He yelled with tears in his eyes. So even between enemies such wonderful friendship can bloom. You're an enemy too, shithead. Sanji yelled at him. Such harsh words for your friend. Bone Clay replied and covered his face with his hands, as if he was going to burst into tears again. Look, if I didn't take your ship, what do you think would have happened to it? Marines might have taken it. Nami replied. Bone Clay shook his head. Not might have taken it. He yelled. Marines would definitely have taken it. This island is totally blockaded by marine ships. Totally blockaded. Even if the king forbids the navy from pursuing you inside the country, oh nice interview, by the way, Nugi chan Thanks. Luffy interjected. They don't care about the king's rules here on the sea. Bone Clay finished. Bone Chan. You saved Mary. Luffy yelled and jumped on the ship and hugged him. Both had teary eyes. So you still see Mai as your friend, Nugi chan Bone Clay asked. Friend Yusup and Chopper asked. In about a minute, all four of them were dancing while yelling. Stop joking around. Boy, MR.2. With the marines blockading our ship, that means you also couldn't escape. And so, you're using us to escape safely? Zoro asked. He hit his head on the ship and fell on the ground. Bone Chan. The silly trio yelled. That's right. Bone Clay admitted. Because we need each other. It's because of the horrible times we live in. In the name of sacred friendship, let's combine our forces and fight together as one. Yeah. Yusuf and Chopper yelled. Luffy just smiled. It may not seem that way yet, but you're a true friend, Bone Chan. He thought. A few minutes later. After exiting the Sandora River, the Going Mary and Swanda Express were immediately under fire. Fire, fire. Someone yelled from a marine ship. Several iron spears flew towards the Going Mary. For some reason they didn't fire at all at the Swanda. Maybe they didn't think they were enemies or they simply prioritized the Straw Hat ship, but in any case, all the iron spears went to the poor Mary. Luffy jumped on the figurehead of the ship. He pulled out his sword. He slashed from one side to the other, but with that he only stopped the front attacks. The ship was still hit with several spears from the other sides. Zoro and Sanji somehow repelled some attacks from the left, but the rest were unprotected. A few of them just bounced off the hull, but half of them hit. Oh I. There's no way I can patch up this many holes. Chopper yelled from the men's quarters. Robin helped him by handing him planks with her hands and. Do something, guys. Nami yelled. 
We can only protect two sides. Sanji responded. Eight ships are too much. Yusuf then aimed the cannon on the deck and fired it. It hit one of the marine ships and the mast, and the rest of the ship collapsed on the ship next to it, sinking them both. Yusuf. Luffy yelled. Great aim. The sharpshooter just kept gawking at his handiwork, but then he snapped out of it. Yosh. Just like I calculated. He finally yelled. That's what I can do when you rely on me. That's why I chose you, Yusuf. Luffy thought and smiled. Nice aim, Nose Chan. Bone Clay complimented. You did good, Long Nose Kun. Robin added. Now that those ships are gone, full speed in that direction. Bone Clay yelled. Bone Clay Sama, a problem. One of his men yelled from the Swanda. It's the Black Cage. Mr. Two seemed to panic momentarily. Black Cage Hina is the Marine HQ captain who patrols this part of the sea. Robin told everyone. That's not good. MR.2 yelled. We need to get away fast. His men prepared to get away, but the straw hat showed no indication of wanting to do that. What are you guys doing? Mr. Two yelled at them. If you want to go, just go. We can't. Luffy told him. The men on the Swanda just begged Bone Clay to escape on their own. We made a promise to be at the Eastern Harbor at noon. Nami told him. There's no time left. We need to press forward. Really, that's the silliest thing I've ever heard, guys. What possible treasure could it be worth your life? Mr. Two yelled in panic. We're going to see in a comma. Luffy answered him. Bone Clay seemed struck deep by those words. Immediately upon hearing them he declared that he and his men will divert the Navy's attention. The Swanda left the Straw Hat Pirates and headed south. The Navy ship soon followed them. Sorry, Bone Chan. If we somehow got near enough for me to cut up all those ships, this wouldn't be necessary, but there's no way to do that without completely destroying the Going Merry. Luffy thought. Since attacking Impel Down is inevitable now, I guess I'll see you soon. The Straw Hat Pirates watched in shock, and half of them cried as they saw the Swanda getting destroyed by the Iron Spears while they were escaping. Bone Chan. Luffy yelled. He swore he could hear his friend yelling a calm away in the distance. You're always so quick to sacrifice yourself for a friend. Mr. Two. Thought Robin. I never thought. Upon reaching the agreed meeting place, they immediately heard Vivi's voice through the speakers. So Princess Anne isn't coming. Robin asked. That's not. Zora replied to her, even though it wasn't really a question. Everyone looked sad. Robin's eyes glanced at the captain. He looks disappointed, but not really surprised. She thought to herself. They started slowly sailing away. Everyone. Someone yelled. They immediately turned around. Vivi. Keru. Everyone yelled and waved at them. They waved back. She took the Den Den Mushy. I want to have more adventures. Vivi spoke through the Den Den Mushy. I want to, but I can't, because I love my country. But I wonder, if we meet again, she continued. Will you still call me Nakama? After hearing this, the Straw Hat members wordlessly lifted their left hands, with an X written on each of them. Flashback. So we learned that the enemy has the ability to mimic our looks. But we shouldn't be scared. This gives us an advantage. Let this mark show that we'll always be Nakama. But this we don't need to doubt our Nakama. Vivi cried as the Straw Hats departed. Everyone, wake up. Luffy yelled. The other inhabitants of the Going Merry groaned in annoyance. Wake up now. He yelled once again. What is it, stupid shithead? Sanji yelled at him. Why are you waking us in the middle of the night? It's not night, Sanji. It's morning. Luffy replied. It's still dark. Yusuf muttered. And you let us sleep, Zora yelled at him. Why are you yelling, morons? Nami shouted from the women's quarters. Well, I want everyone awake. Luffy replied. Her eye twitched, not that you could see that from the other side of the wall, but anyway. Why? She yelled. Yusuf covered his head with his pillow. Well, I couldn't sleep, Luffy began. That's why you woke us up, shithead Sanji yelled at him. Luffy shook his head. We need to talk about your training too. And your battles in Arabasta. The captain replied. Also, Robin and Chopper were already up. Luffy, Chopper is on guard duty, and Robin is just weird. Zoro told him with an annoyed expression. Well, anyway. Don't change the subject. Zoro yelled at him with shark teeth. Shishishi, sorry, sorry. Luffy apologized insincerely. Anyway, I also got a message from my friend Shanks. Check this out. That piqued their interest, so they finally got up and went towards him. He handed them the note. Do. Monkey D. Luffy. From. Red-haired Shanks. Hey Anchor. Me and the guys heard about what you did in Arabasta. And you're right, that was cool. Anyway, we wanted to hear from you, and since I never gave you the Den Den Mushy number, here it is. Hope you have one of those snails aboard. Call us soon. Shanks. Why why Yonku red-haired Shanks Yusup stuttered. Luffy laughed. Shishishi, that's him. 
That's Shanks. He told them. They stared at him. Hey, Nami. Come to the deck. Luffy yelled. She groaned in annoyance. Fine. She shouted. Everyone made their way to the deck to find Robin sitting on a chair next to the mast with a book on her lap. So what did you want from us, Captain San? She asked. He smiled. We're going to call Shanks. Shishishi. He chirped out. Her eyes widened. Then he ran towards the kitchen and soon came back with the den den mushy that the king had given him. He sat down on the ground. He checked to see if everyone was there and it turned out there was, except Chopper who was on the crow's nest. He dialed the number. Oosh moosh. Luffy yelled into the snail phone. Hey, is that you Luffy? A sleepy sounding voice asked. Yep, that's me Ben. Luffy replied cheerfully. Excuse me, Captain San. Robin asked. But is that Ben Beckman? Yep. The voice replied. Yawin that's me. Why are you calling so early, Luffy? Well, I couldn't sleep and I was bored. Luffy replied. Ben sighed. Honestly, you're just as bad as the captain. He replied. Want to talk to him and the guys. Yep. Luffy replied. Ben sighed. There was silence for a moment and then. Oh I, guys. Wake up. Ben shouted. They could hear annoyed and sleepy groans. Why are shouting, Ben? Someone whined loudly. That sounds just like Luffy. Several of the straw hats thought. Luffy's calling. Ben told them. They started talking amongst themselves. Luffy? Did he say Luffy? Anchor's calling. That scary kid. But everyone was interrupted by a loud crash. TSK, TSK, TSK. I know you're excited captain, but you should really watch where you're going. Ben scolded. Then there was a little more commotion as some of the other members made their way to the first mate. Then someone picked up the Den Den Mushy. Hey Anchor. Yawn a different sleepy sounding voice greeted. Hey Shanks. Luffy greeted cheerfully. That's red haired Shanks. Nami thought. First white beard and now red haired. Why did you have call so early, Anchor? Shanks whined. It's like 5 in the morning. Stop calling me that, jerk. Luffy shouted. The straw hats cringed upon hearing that, but to their surprise, Shanks laughed. Ha 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 ha. Sorry. He apologized and sincerely. He's exactly like Luffy. Zora thought. It's just so tempting to call you that. Shanks continued. Since you always sink in the sea. Like the little anchor you are. Gahaha. Ha. So does Whitebeard. Luffy shouted at him and then sighed. Stupid jerk. Shanks laughed. I guess that's right. He replied after a few moments. Hey Luffy. A few other voices greeted. It seems Captain San is pretty popular on that ship. Robin thought to herself. Hey guys. Luffy greeted back. So, Luffy. Shanks started again. We heard what happened in Arabasta. Hawkeyes even showed me the interview. Hawkeyes Zora thought. Shishishi. So what do you think? Luffy asked him. It was really cool. Standing between two armies and telling them you'd beat them up. Gahahaha. He continued. I can't believe it. Yusuf thought. He's the same as Luffy. Shishishi. I know, right Luffy replied. Oh, by the way, I talked to Whitebeard a few days ago. It was silence for a few moments. Really? Shanks asked. And? Does he like you? No idea. Marco seems to like me though. Luffy replied. Really Shanks whined. He doesn't like me. He's always mean to me. Ah, that reminds me. Luffy told him. Thatch survived. There was silence again for a few moments. Ah really? Shanks asked. Hmm, now that's surprising. But Whitebeard told me not to pursue Blackbeard. Luffy told him in a resigned sounding voice. Hmm. Then you should listen to him. You don't want to upset Whitebeard himself, do you? Shanks replied. I don't care if he's the strongest, but he is Ace's captain. Luffy answered and sighed. Well, you can always attack him pell down if Ace gets taken. Shanks replied. What? Oh, I'll do that. Luffy told him. Wait I it. They're talking about assaulting him pell down like it's a normal thing. Everyone thought. Anyway, where are you now, Luffy? Shanks asked. Oh, we've left Arabasta two days ago, and now we're heading to the next island. Luffy told him. Ah, Sky Island then. Should be fun Shanks replied. Oh, by the way, a few years ago your brothers came to thank me for saving your life, Luffy. They did? Luffy asked. Yeah. But I didn't save your life, Luffy. I don't want to take credit for things I didn't do. Shanks whined. Shishishi. Sorry. Luffy apologized. But I didn't want them to know what really happened. So what did really happen? Zoro asked. Hey, don't interrupt two captains talking. Shanks whined. Luffy sighed. I was going to say that. Jerk. He replied. Anchor got attacked by bandits when he was seven and he beat them all up. Shanks told them. When he was seven. 
everyone thought. Luffy laughed sheepishly. Yeah, but there were only like 20 of them, and the leader only had an 8.000.000 berry bounty. He replied. You were seven. Everyone yelled at him. Shishishishi. Anyway, is Yasset there with you? I have his son in my crew now Luffy told them. Dad Yusa thought. Is it true? Someone yelled and there was some commotion. Presumably the red-haired sniper pulled the Den Den Mushy from his captain's hands. Yusuf, are you there? Luffy then made room for Yusuf and allowed him to talk to his father. Yusuf told him about his mother dying, and they shed some tears, and after that Yusuf told him about all their adventures, to which even the rest of them listened intently, both crews. Luffy sighed. Zoro saw that and put his hand on his shoulder again. Still thinking about your dad? He asked. Luffy nodded. Hey give me back anchor. Shanks yelled after a few minutes. Luffy made his way to the snail phone again. So, Anchor, did you meet your father? He asked him. Luffy sighed. Yep. He replied. You don't sound too happy about it. Shanks concluded after a few moments of silence. I was a jerk. Luffy said simply. Oh, don't worry about it too much, Luffy. Shanks replied. If he cares about you, he'll try again. If not, then he probably deserves what you said. Whatever it was. Luffy sighed. I guess so. He replied after a few moments. So, I guess that's it for now, Luffy. Call us again soon. And we'll see you in the new world someday. Shanks told him. Luffy smiled. Yeah. And since you can't stop calling me Anchor, I'll have to beat you up. Luffy replied. Ahahahaha. <laughs> Bye Luffy, told him. See you soon Shanks. Luffy replied and hung up. As soon as he did, Nami came up to him and bonked him on the head. Which did nothing of course, but Luffy still whined. What was that for? Luffy asked. Why did you have to talk to him that way? Nami yelled at him. Luffy sighed. Nami, Shanks and his crew are my friends. They really don't mind. There was silence for a few moments and then. Okay. Now everyone tell me how your battles in Arabasta went and what you can do now. Luffy yelled out, startling them from the peaceful silence. Zoro, you go first. Ahem. Will I fart Mr. One? Zoro started. He had a devil fruit that allowed him to turn his body parts into steel blades. I got pretty beaten up, but in the end I was able to cut him, and now I can cut steel. That's good. Luffy replied. You'll soon be able to use flying blade attacks then. There are swordsmen in this world who can cut nothing. Right. That's the point. Zoro told him. Luffy grinned and nodded. The rest of the straw hats were confused however, but before anyone could ask anything, Luffy motioned for Sanji to start. Well, I fought Mr. Two. Sanji started. He had the main main no me, and he used some weird ballet kicking technique. I think I was stronger than him, but he tricked me a few times and used those swans on his back for fighting, so we were pretty even. Well, it's good training. Bone Chan did seem tough. Luffy replied. Nami. Me? Nami asked. Um, I fought Mrs. Doublefinger using this new weapon Yusuf gave me. She showed her Klim attacked. Like you suggested, Luffy, I tested it out first, so I didn't have too much trouble using it in battle. She did have a horrible devil fruit, so she wounded me a lot. Nami finished. Luffy nodded. Still, if you use the weapon for the first time in battle, you'd probably be much worse off. Luffy told her. She sighed. Can't argue with that. She admitted. Chopper? Luffy asked. Me and Yusuf fought together. Chopper told him. We fought Mr. Four and Miss Merry Christmas I think. We got pretty beaten up. He looked down on the ground. Hey. Luffy told them. Everyone else got beaten up, so don't be ashamed. You're the ones who won after all. Yusuf and Chopper raised their heads. Well, Chopper continued. The woman had this weird mole devil fruit, and the man was really big and tough. They also had this gun that they said had eaten a dog devil fruit. What? Everyone else, except Luffy, yelled. Luffy just nodded. Stuff like that is possible here on the Grand Line. I heard of Cannon that had eaten a sheep devil fruit. He told them. They looked at him surprised. Robin, tell us what you can do. Luffy then said. She looked at him, a bit startled by being included, but nodded nonetheless. I have eaten the Hana Hana no Mi. She started. I can sprout my body parts anywhere where I can see, but clothes nearby I can do that even in places that I can't see. I can sprout many different body parts, but I mostly use hands and sometimes eyes, ears or legs. Cool. Yusuf and Chopper beamed. She just laughed. What about you, Captain San, would you mind telling us about your battle and abilities? She asked after a few moments. I couldn't help but notice that you were able to defeat Crocodile pretty easily if I may say so. Luffy looked at her for a moment and then nodded. I can do that. Some of you already know much about that, but I can repeat it. He said. First, I've eaten the Gomu Gomu no Mi. It turned my body to rubber. 
I can take all blunt hits unless they are very strong or hockey infused. Now, most devil fruits become ineffective when the user is affected by sea stone, but my body is always rubber. I never need to activate my ability. Everyone nodded. I'm also a master of all three forms of hockey, observation, armament and intimidation. Those allow me to sense the presence of people, their attacks, surround body parts with invisible or visible hockey armor, overpower the will of others and other things. Hockey makes me a lot stronger and harder to fight. Luffy concluded. But how were you able to even touch Crocodile? Robin asked. And why did you say that you used water to the newspaper? But armament hockey. It allows you to bypass devil fruit defenses and touch Aloja's body directly. Or in my case, punch it. Luffy replied. But why did you lie, Captain San? Robin asked. Luffy sighed. I want to appear weaker than I am, and saying I have hockey would betray my strength, since hockey users are usually very tough. Luffy answered. Ah, right. Robin, you'll have to start training hockey too. She looked at him oddly. I don't feel like explaining everything again, so ask them. Luffy told her. I'm sure Sanji wouldn't mind telling you everything I've said about hockey. She looked at Sanji. Sure, Robin Schwan. It's no problem at all, my dear. Any more questions? He asked and looked at everyone. Nobody said anything. He sighed. Now I'm bored again. That is the end so, thanks for watching. Comment down below with recommendations on what fanfic I should do next. And remember to like and subscribe to my channel.